Blessings. Good afternoon, everybody, man. We live, we live, we live, we live, we live, we live with, with weapon, today's weapon. And I made one of the, the, the silliest mistakes, and I just I just realized it just now. I forget to put the episode, what episode this is. And I guess because last episode kind of threw me off, but, you know, I definitely uh, fixed that. But yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. You know, I know people will be tuning in as, as, as the show go on and stuff like that, just, but I just want to appreciate everybody who tuning in right now. I hope everybody doing well, man. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the in the wall, man. And you know, and before we get into our our um our special guest, you know, uh, a, a VI legend, uh, a just a, a universal legend all over the wall and stuff like that. We definitely uh first, you know, talk about um last week episode. Big up, Kareem. Big up, big bro. Big up, big up, big up. You know, we uh we touch on last episode real quick. You know, I get into some shout outs. You know. And then we we definitely start the show, but um you know last, last episode big up Alrika last episode we had um we had big up Chris big up last episode we had um some of the players them you know from the the VI elite um travel team from from Saint Croix the Virgin Islands you know and they up in um you know just outside of Atlanta so you know we had some of the players them on the show. I can't remember all their names, you know. So since I can't remember all their names, I'm not gonna mention any. I'm not gonna mention any because I just don't want to leave out one person, you know, two people, you know. But um, you know, hopefully they're having a good, um, you know, a good tournament. They was on, um, they was on Thursday, and it was it was a great show, man. Just to get some of the 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 the, the young athletes on, you know, the future who's up next. You know, we had, we asked them some questions, and it, it it was a fun episode, man. We learned a lot about the kids. You know, shout out to all the parents. They're doing a great, great, great job with, 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 with the kids. I'm, uh, big up to Coach Malloy. Big up to Coach Shepard. Big up to Coach uh, Basie. You know, they're doing a good job with, with all the um, with all the kids, man. They're doing a great job. Uh, uh, big up uh, Zoro. Uh, shout out to Zoro. Shout out to Bao. Shout out to um, and some of the high school coaches that's coaching their players that's playing in the tournament as well too. You know, shout out to everybody, man, and, and keep up the go work, man. You guys making everybody proud, and you guys changing and um, creating opportunities for the kids them like, you know. So, um, just uh, just does big shout out, man. First, uh, shout out to all the viewers, man. All the viewers who always tune in. Some of the view, if it's the first time viewers, whoever does, appreciate you guys um tuning in and always supporting the different individual that we have on the platform. The elite podcast is pretty much was based off of sports. But you know, we try to hit all different um, avenues, and we like to we like to um, invite anybody on. You know, we just want them to tell their story representing the Virgin Islands. We just want to preserve history. We want to continue to um, hand on the history, and we give people our voices. You know, where they could they could speak their truth. You know, they could speak their peace. You could you know they could they could say from their perspective. You know, we just want to show appreciation because um, you know there's a lot of hard work and sacrifice that goes in goes into this being a coach or being an athlete but just being a, a parent or a human being in general you know you make a lot of sacrifices your loved ones definitely see that you spend a lot of time away you know from from your family and your kids and stuff there's a lot of sacrifices so sometimes just just sitting back and hearing your loved one or your friend or a former teammate just tell this story you know and you just hear it from their perspective something it puts a lot of stuff in perspective you know so um i just appreciate everybody that have, uh, made it to the platform and told his story man so i definitely appreciate them and the future as well that will be coming on you know but i hope everybody doing well once again the elite podcast welcomes anybody anybody that have a story and they want to share we more than welcome to give you guys a voice to share your story if you want you know if it's if it's going to inspire anyone or, or save anyone's life whoever the case may be you know so big up to everybody big up to everybody in the vi big up to everybody all over the world tuning in and everything man you know so just quick shout out to some um Oh, real quick too. You know, during the live show, you're gonna see um, some tickers um, going across. You know, those, those are just um, local business owners and just you know influential people in the Virgin Islands and stuff like that. So if you guys want to support them, you guys want to look them up on Facebook, you know, or anything, you know, you guys more than welcome to do it. You know, so just check out the, the ticker. You're gonna see it running across the screen. But you know, just just shout out to um, you know. Uh, Legend Street for zero, um, you know, big up to, to Amar, big up to the family and everybody, man, you know, Melty Park, Cookie Class, you know, Sibon, you know, Next Level Up, you know, Calypso Clothing, Hungry House Hustle Apparel, you know, definitely big up to Caribbean Girls Rock, Melted by Croix, you know, just those are some, you know, local business owners, you know, definitely tune in to Sea Boogie Talks every Wednesday, 8 p.m., 
you know, definitely tune in. He's doing big things with his podcast, you know, a lot of, you know, interesting topics, a lot of great guests. So definitely uh, tune in to him. Once again, Wednesdays, 8 p.m., you know, tune in to see Boogie Talks. You will see it on the ticker as well, too. And also, you know, Live Wire Sports, definitely big up to them. They do a lot of big things. They do, do a lot of good things for um, all the different VI athletes, you know, and all the high school athletes. So definitely shout out to them, too, as well. So make sure you guys tune in to them. Check out their Facebook as well, too. You know, so they're doing a lot of good things. Like everybody else who's doing podcasts and stuff for the Virgin Islands, definitely shout out to them as well, too. I don't really be on Facebook that much, so I'm not really up to par with what's going on and stuff like that and anything, you know. So just definitely big up to everybody, man. Bubbles, promotion, you know, Nona Enviro Group, definitely big up to Nona Enviro Group. Definitely check out the website, you know, enviranona.com. So make sure you guys check that out, you know. So hope everybody doing well. Um, you know, we're about to start the show in the next minute, but... You know, our special guest today, who we're going to be honoring and celebrating is, uh, you know, Leon Weapon Trimingham. You know, this is an individual that I heard about, you know, just growing up in in, in St. Croix, you know, playing basketball. You know, you always hear about, you hear about Weapon. You know, they said, man, you should have seen Weapon play. So this man was one of the baddest, you know how it is. You know, so you hear a lot of, you hear a lot of Weapon, you hear Zorro, you know, you hear Bola, you have a lot, you hear a lot of people, Tyro Alec, you know, a lot of legendary basketball players growing up. But you know, um, weapon weapon name always come up, and he's one of the most requested person to try and appear on the podcast. You know, so this is my first time. You know, it's my first time meeting him. You know, so I'm very, I'm very, you know, I'm very excited about about this uh, about this episode. Just just getting to hear his story, you know, and the come up and, and everything, man. So um, I hope everybody doing well. Hope everybody tuning in. Also, new new viewers definitely check out the um. The YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, have all the episodes that we have had, you know, so definitely check it out. It's uh, v.i.legends, you know, v.i.legends, the YouTube channel. Make sure you check that out and everything. So, well, well no further ado, man, the legendary, you know, Hall of Fame, you know, one of a kind. You know, a lot of people say the Michael Jordan, you know, of the VI, Michael Jordan of, you know, the different leagues he playing, you know, but... We welcome Leon Weapon Trimingham, man. You know, welcome to the Elite Podcast. Hey, Mumba. Thanks, man. Thanks for being on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. No problem, man. Pleasure. No problem, man. No problem. I hope yeah. all is well, man. And just real quick, viewers, uh, can I tell me if um if you could hear us good? You know, the, the um you know the volume and stuff. Make sure you guys could hear us good. You know, so if you guys have any trouble, yeah. just just let us know in the chat, man. But you know, hey, thanks for coming on the platform, man. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. I, hey, happy to be here, man. I've been following you, so you know, I'm happy to be here and um, hey, share my story. Yeah, man. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Thank you, thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. You know, so um, you know, before we get started, do you want to, you know, what you want to give any shout outs or anything, or if you want to do that sometime later on, that's more than welcome too. Yeah. Uh, Man, if I get shout outs, I'll be getting shout outs all day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes they call this podcast the RD podcast too, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, there's a lot of people out there, man, that um, I owe a lot to. You know, number one, my family, uh, my mom and dad, you know, my sister, uh, Adriana White. Um, <clears throat> you know, then you go down to uh, in Central. You know, I want to give a shout out to Lockhart if he's watching. Um, I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for, for Lockhart, man. So, and I'm going to get into Lockhart a little bit later. Um, can't forget uh, from, from Raleigh, you know, Zorro, Bus, you know, I mean, it goes on and on, you know, Wadada. I mean, so you have a lot, I have a lot to give shout out to, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, name them throughout the podcast. I'm going to call them out throughout the podcast and stuff. Because okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds good, man. That sounds fancy. good. Yeah. So, and it's funny you mentioned in the beginning, you mentioned um, Zorro and um, who did you mention? You mentioned someone else. Um, uh, who's the other one you mentioned? Uh, Tyrone Alec, Bulla. Tyrone Alec, Bulla. You know what I'm saying? These are people when I grew, when I was growing up that I used to look up to. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you a quick story, man, how, how this whole thing gets started, man. Um, yeah, yeah. My interest in basketball started from Arthur Richards. You know what I'm saying, and it started by one team, and that was Wanted. 
you know what I'm saying? We had a team in Arthur Richards named Wanted. It was a lunch league. And they used to play. I mean, that was like, you know, that was it. You know, everyone couldn't wait for lunchtime to go and watch these, you know, these leagues and stuff. And Wanted was a team that Zoe was on. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, when the class is out, we used to run down, get our, you know, bun and cheese. You know, I know people who listen and know what bun and cheese means. You get bun and cheese, get my coat, go into the gym, watch Wanted play. They would play against pushes. They would play against eradication. And that's where my love started to grow for the game. It was like, man, you know what? I'm seeing these guys do things that, man. You know, you, I mean, even seen on, on TV. You know, so that's where everything got started was right there in a junior high school. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And then it just, it just took off from there. I just had that passion. Um, you know, I would go home and tell my, tell my dad, look, I want to be a basketball player. He was like, what? A yeah, basketball player? I was like, yeah, I want to be a basketball player. He was like, I want to be a basketball player. You know, it's back in the days now. You know, it's a little different from it is today. Yeah, true. That so is. it was like, okay. You know, so whenever he asked me, I would tell him something different just so, you know, he won't get mad at me. But once they realized I was serious about it, it was off and popping, man. It was my dad was behind me, my mom was behind me. Um, my sister, she made my first uniform. My first uniform was a white t shirt with a number and my nickname in the back. <laughs> That's my first ever uniform, man. A Haynes t shirt. All right. Oh, Fruit of the Loom. I can't remember which brand it was, but it was one of those brands. Yeah. And that's how it all got started, man. It took off from there. So, so you pretty much started playing basketball in, 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 in junior high. Yeah, that's when I, that's when I start to. That's when I tried to play. That's when you tried to play. You know, I, I tried to play. You know, I start picking up basketball and I start playing or whatever. You know, um, I wasn't a good back then. Um, and then I went to Central. Uh, I think in tenth grade, I tried out for the team. I got cut. They block out listening, tell him, you know, why he cut me in tenth grade. And then um, 11th grade, I didn't even try for the team. I was like, I ain't trying out for the team, man. I'm, I'm done with that. But in 12th grade, I grew some inches now. By now, I probably grew about maybe three, four inches. Mm -hmm. So I had a little bit of height on me now. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know, one time I saw Lockhart, and he was like, you try for the team? I'm like, I don't know, man. You cut me last time. I don't know if I'm going to try. He said, you should try for the team. You should try out. So I went out. I tried out. I made it. Guess how many games I played that that season? Two. Two? Two games. Wow. Two get I never forget, man. When I had my uniform, it was I think it was number fifty five. I was so proud to get that uniform, man, that said carries in the front. Yeah. And I only played two games because I wasn't I wasn't studying. I wasn't eligible. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't really I couldn't really play. So I was like just there watching. Trying to get my, my lesson up, you know, trying to see if I can, you know, at least have some games under my belt so I can get some exposure so I can, you know, hopefully play in college or where. Yeah. I played two games, man, so no one saw me play. I mean, I wasn't even that good. I was just tall, you know what I'm saying? Um, but like I still give me an opportunity to play. So now I'm done. I'm out of school now. <laughs> So we thinking, okay, what am I going to do? My best friend at the time, uh, Kenneth Applewhite, he was going to the Air Force, right? That was his thing. He was going to the Air Force. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I might go to the Air Force too. I don't know what else to do. I might go to the Air Force. And one day, that's why I tell you, man, Lockout had a huge part in, in how this all began. Real quick, so sorry, saw, sorry to uh -huh. interrupt you real quick. We have I, want, I just wanted to ask this question from a Facebook user. I think it was uh, uh, Jermaine. Jermaine asked, what yeah. year did you enter middle school? Uh, you know, um, so we didn't have a middle school in, in St. Well, it's junior high, junior high. Like, Elementary, uh, junior high. Yeah, Arta. What year? Like, what year you enter Arta? Uh, what year did I enter there? Man. Okay, I know I graduated from, was that like 80, 82, 83? Somewhere around there. Okay. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. So um so yeah, so so one day, uh, you know, so lockout see me one day. 
Yeah, I'll never forget. I remember this like it was yesterday. He's like, Trimming up, what you gonna do with your life? I'm like, man, I'm, I'm gonna go to the Air Force, you know? He's like, Air Force? You don't wanna play college ball? I'm like, how am I gonna play college ball, man? No one saw me, no one, you know, how am I gonna play? So I don't, up to this day, I don't know how Lockhart pulled this off, man, but they had a tournament in Puerto Rico. Uh, I think he was taking a team over there. And he worked it out with another guy in Puerto Rico named Raymond Milligan. So it was the two, the two Raymonds had a huge part in my, in my beginning in basketball, in my basketball journey. So he worked it out where I could travel with the team and play. And at the same time, they had the head coach for American University at Bayern Moon. He was going to come to the game and he was going to scout me. So it just so happened that <clears throat> I went there and um, I played. I played well. Bam. Coach liked me. Gave me a scholarship on the spot. Bam. So here I am now. <clears throat> I'm in college in Puerto Rico. My first year. So I'm at the university in Bayamon. And I'm at the university, if I remember correctly, we used to actually host, or they used to host the San Juan shootout. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, okay, you were you at a good school. You can get some exposure here. So we went out there and in American University, I did work. I did work in American University in Puerto Rico. I loved it. You know, I had all the beans and rice I could eat, yeah. beans, rice, and chicken. Yeah, yeah. And I loved it in Puerto Rico. You know what I'm saying? And, um, <clears throat> but the, the season finished and I think we won a championship and everything. And another guy came into my life. This when he first came into my life. His name was Mario Butler. I don't know if you guys know Mario Butler, but he's a legend in Puerto Rico, in the Superior League. He's a legend in Panama. He's a legend in Iowa, you know what I'm saying? So he came to me, he told me, he's like, look, man, hey, you got some skills, but if you stay in Puerto Rico, you're not gonna get the exposure you need. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> what do you suggest? So he was like, well, you know, I can call the coach that I played for in Iowa, tell him about you, bam, and see what happens. Yeah. Now keep in mind this this way back in the late eighties, right? We didn't have no internet, we didn't have no social media, we had none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So he told the coach about me. The coach name was Ray Naki. Ray Naki, I don't think Ray Naki up to this day, I don't think he had seen me play. I don't think he saw me play back then. He went basically solely on the word of Mario Butler. And before you know it, I had a full ride going to Iowa, to Briarcliff University wow. in Iowa. And I'm like, man, okay. So I went home, told my, told my folks, and I told my mom, I said, mom, I'm, I'm going to Iowa. She's like, Ohio? I'm like, no, no, Iowa. Cause she never heard about it, I never heard about it. I'm like, well, am I going to Iowa to do? So went to Iowa, um, went up there, man, my first year, I redshirted. And the second year I played, and that's when I knew, you know what? I'm gonna make a name of myself up here. I am, you know what I'm saying? And my third year, I was a second team All-American. My senior year, I was the first team All-American. Bam. <clears throat> and then from there, opportunities came down internationally. We had, we had some, um, some NBA teams that would scout me from Briarcliff, you know, so, I mean, there's a lot of people that played a role in my life, man. You know, it started with my parents. Then it started with my my sister making my first uniform. Then it went up to the guys I used to watch playing in Arthur Richards, you know. And then it went to Puerto Rico. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys had a hand in my life, man. That's why I can't say, okay, well, I did it by myself. I'd be lying. I didn't do it by myself. True. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just listing the guys that helped me, the people that helped me before I turned professional. When I turned professional, it's a whole different ball game because now Very true. I had agents who not only would be a manager or be my agent, they were like a father figure to me. You know, my first agent, Dave Atkins, I call him Doc up to this day. He was like a father figure to me. He guided me for years. You know what I'm saying? Then after that, it was 
Jose Paris. He became like a father to me, real, like a real dad to me, you know, because he's from Puerto Rico. So yeah. He had that, that close connection. And so I had people in my life all the way through, man, all the way through, you know, so I was blessed to have, to have the career that I did, you know. So, Can you talk about the legendary tree and tree tournaments back in the days? Oh, <laughs> Woo, man, let me tell you. Sometimes we used to play two and three like in on Raleigh, on Raleigh Court. Now, when I was younger, you know, my dad was strict. He didn't, you know, we didn't go outside maybe past like six, seven o'clock. You know, he was like, no, 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 no. And yeah, sometimes yeah. that's when you had the good runnings is, you know, at night. Yeah. So, but when I got older and I started to be able to go out there and stuff, man, you had, man, these three and three games, man, even five and five, man. You talk about being physical. You talk, you talk about talking trash. That's why when I went to, to Iowa and I started playing ball in there and people started talking trash to me, it didn't faze me because yeah. they, didn't, they didn't realize I already dealt with that stuff back home. Yeah, that's when, true. I went to, when I went to Australia and they started talking trash to me, they didn't realize I dealt with that stuff back home. So I was already seasoned with all the trash. So the more people talk trash to me, the better I play. So, but man, it was um these tournaments, man, and Valley, man, it was woo bad. You call foul at your own peril. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you call foul. The only how the foul gonna be legit is if majority rules. Yeah. If majority doesn't rule, it ain't no foul. They can knock you down, it ain't no foul. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't have the floor we had in Raleigh was was concrete. It was you know it wasn't no wood, no wood floor. It wasn't none of that. It was concrete. Yeah. So you go up and you get fouled and you fall. Yeah, you gonna feel that. Yeah, you gonna feel you know that for real. Yeah. And then we also had we used to play games down in Frederick State in the West Side on Sundays. We used to go down there and play. Even like I used to come out there too. And I think that's when I started to earn the respect of most of those guys from West, man, because everybody should be out there. Everybody being out there. You're talking about Zoe will come out there sometimes, then you had um, Fox will come out there sometimes, then you had um, uh, Blackhead will come out there sometimes, then you had even Lockhart will come out there sometimes. I mean, and we all talking trash. All talking trash. You know what I'm saying? So that's everything. In the beginning, man, that's where everything for me started was was right there, you know, in, in the Virgin Islands, man. And it just it just stuck with me. So now I'm traveling, going all over the world, and I'm not phased by anything. Yeah, by I'm anything, not phased yeah. by by who I see. I'm not phased by who I'm playing against. Because in my mind, I played against the best back in the Virgin Islands. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. how I used to that's how I used to compete. And like when I played against someone like a, a bigger guy than me, you know, or a big man down low, I would think, okay, I remember this one used to play pick up games in, in Central and I'm going up against Macmillan. Boom. You know, Macmillan had that little short hook. And he yeah, would always yeah. be like, you know, I was like, for years, these shots go in there for years. You know, talking trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. You know what I'm saying? If I can guard Macmillan, I can guard you. You know what I'm saying? You, if I got a guard, a guard, or whatever, I picture myself guarding Zoro. I'm like, okay, if I can stay in front of Zoro, I can stay in front of everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm so I had, that was, that was what I used to, to help me in my career, man. It was, you know, and I think that's why people, they couldn't really phase me, and they tend to, to get them annoyed because they tried everything. Everything. Do that, yeah. And it didn't work. It didn't work. If I had a bad game, it was on me. You know, it was, you know, I mean, I wasn't phased by anyone. You know what I'm in my mind, I already had all that stuff already. Which part of Iowa yeah, is Brea College? Sioux City. Oh, uh, Sioux City? Okay. Never, yeah, never heard of Sioux City before, man. I was flying into Sioux City. I'll, I'll never forget. I flew from Chicago and going to Sioux City, and I'm flying over. And all I'm seeing is just squares of grass. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. 
And I'm like, wait, I ain't seeing no city. I ain't seeing no roads. I ain't seeing nothing. I'm just seeing grass, squares, 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 squares. So finally we land. And, you know, in Sioux City, they had, they didn't have a walkway. So the plane will land and they'll bring the stairs up. You know what I'm saying? So, man, they opened that door. Mumba, I tell you, I had on a windbreaker and I think I had on some shorts. And man, when I came out that plane, I was freezing my butt off. Yeah, you were freezing. And like it was that. like, yeah, it was about probably seventy-ish degrees. You know what I'm saying, but again, back home, and also in Puerto Rico, we're not used to seventy degrees really. Everything is on an average eighty-five. That's true. You know what I'm saying. So I'm freezing my butt off, man. I told Coach, and Coach met me at the airport. I like Coach. I don't know if I can do this. He says, what? I said, it's too cold up here. I can't, I can't stay up here, man. It's too cold. Yeah. So he took me straight. <laughs> he took me straight to this store and bought me a big old parka jacket. It was like pine green, heavy parka jacket. I had that jacket all four years. I, I, I bet. I, was, I bet. Man, I refuse to let that jacket go. Refuse. I, I spent two years in Marshall Town. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know how Iowa is, man. Two years in Marshall yeah. Town. Yeah, I've been to Sioux City yeah. and stuff, man. Yeah. yeah, but I got used to it eventually. I got used to it, man. I, I definitely yeah, did. Yeah, yeah you, you got used that. to it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. You know, I definitely got used to it. So, yeah. so growing up playing basketball, did you did you watch a lot of basketball on TV? Did you pattern your game from, from any type of college or any NBA basketball player or anyone particularly in the Virgin Islands in St. Croix? Um, I pattern my game, um, or or like study. Or... Yeah, um, growing up, um, my idol was Magic. That was that was my idol. Um, I couldn't really pattern my game after him because my handles wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying so, but I liked watching him play. And then when Jordan came in, and you know he had the hops, he was flying and stuff. I was like, well, you know. I mean, I got a little bit of hops. You know, I can probably, you know, use some of the stuff that, that he was doing. And I, I try to pattern my game after Jordan. You know, I, I really, I studied him and I watched him. And I was like, I wore the wristband like him. I wore my socks like him. I wore the tights that he was wearing. And I always try to get the baggy shorts, you know. But, I mean, of course, my game wasn't anything close to Jordan. But, yeah, you know, that's who, in terms of, NBA players, that's who I looked up to, you know. Okay. Um, in terms of local players, I mean, this list goes on and on and on, you know what I'm saying? Because um, I felt the time when I felt I arrived was when I was noticed by by the guys in the West Side, you know what I'm saying? That's when I felt I, I arrived. Um, when Cobra knew who I was, when Weasel knew who I was, when Sonny knew who I was, when Zoe knew who I was, when Bush knew who I was, when Mac Nina knew who I was, when Wadada knew who I was, when, you know, um, <clears throat> who else? Um, Ronnie knew who I was. That's when I felt, okay, I arrived. You know what I'm saying? Then I start watching these guys closely and see if I can pick a little, little piece from the game, you know? Yeah. So the little jump hook, I got that from Mac, from Mac Miller. Yeah, Mac. You know, and I used that jump hook throughout my whole career, and they couldn't stop it. Wow. They couldn't, you can't, you can't stop, you can't stop that that hook. You, you can't. Know, that's so true. Now, so I was seeing what Mac Miller was talking about. Was you know what? For years I've been, yeah, yeah, because they can't stop it. So I definitely used that from him. You know what I'm saying? And um, and just the knowledge that guys gave me, man. I mean, wow, yeah. it just. You just spit knowledge into me. I mean, you're going for Lockhart, Cornelius, Jarvis, Bow, you know, Shake, um, Shakey. I mean, they all put that knowledge into me, man. It's, you know, it's, and it's stuck, you know, and that's the thing with a lot of young players is that they receive that knowledge from people who have been there, but it doesn't stick. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's They want true. to do their own thing. But when these guys told me all this stuff, it's stuck. And I took it with me. For 14 years i never forgot and so but I, I took a little piece from from everyone you know man that's that's man 
that's amazing you said that man you know you you know you you, you cannot just you live you got your life but you know hearing your story and especially when you're in sports and when you kind of make it to the level you make it you know being a right. professional and then you kind of like reflect back on your journey and realize like the importance of people you people giving you information you know and those mm -hmm. the, just little information to give you could take your career such a you know to, so so far and so long man you know my my coach me you know and it's it's funny you were saying that about the jumbo because i remember mac mac teaching so many different players throughout the years that same right. job hook you know for you mm. to say that and how that how that helped you and you took it with you it, it kind of just speaks volumes you know sometimes you will take take stuff for granted when somebody somebody tell you something like that but you took it you re literally took it to heart and you really made it a part of your game man so you know Definitely. that's amazing because my whole thinking was that you know what these guys grew up with me they're not you know they probably could have sensed that i was going to go you know overseas and you know trying to make something of myself yeah these guys weren't going to give me bad advice you know what i'm saying they weren't going to give me bad advice as a matter of fact i never forget one time we were downtown in um on west it was in a sunday and we were playing and um, bush was like I'll never forget this, man. Bush was like, weapon, hey, don't mess up your life, man. You got a future ahead. Don't mess up your life. Wow. I'll yeah. never forget when he told me that. And I actually think that's the first time Bush had ever talked to me. You know wow. what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, you know? So, I mean, <clears throat> when you have when you have all this knowledge coming to you, I knew they're not gonna they're not gonna steer me wrong. They're not gonna give me wrong advice. So it just that's makes true. sense to try to take it and implement it. You know, into my game, into my into my life, and see, to see where where it takes me. You know what I'm so, um, <clears throat> I did, man. I had had a lot of people that you know to put input into my life when I was growing up. It was, you know, it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, man. That's you know, man, so. It's amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> and I definitely big up to Bush, man. Definitely big up to Bush. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, most definitely, man. So, you know, but again, everything started back in that little gym in Arthur Richards, man. It was that little that little gym. Yeah, that little you gym. Know, you see, when Wanted would play, I used to remember Wanted playing against Radication. Whenever Radication win, they would they would play. They had the little box, and they would start playing Radication by Yellow Man. You know, it'd be like Operation Rock. You know, I was like, whoa. You know, as a little kid, man, you looking up, you like. Man, that's that's what I'm talking about. And then when you had these games between Suns and Caribs, you see Caribs walk in. Yeah. And it was like, wow, you know, Lockout walk in. Lockout had that aura to him, man. He walked in, it's like, whoa, okay, that's that's real Lockout. Okay, you know, it's like he had that aura, you know. And then behind him, you had all the Caribs walking in. And then on the other side, you had, you know, you had Zoro, Quan, you had animal um all andrews you had all these guys man i tell you what my brother, man. those are some of the best basketball that that i've seen that yeah. i've seen and i wasn't even playing <laughs> <laughs> you know so so yeah man it was it was amazing though. It, was a, it was an amazing time so so when you transition to to professional basketball what was mm -hmm. the f first you know First team, you know, first country. Where where, where did you go? Uh, Sydney, Sydney, Australia. Australia. Wow. That's the first. That's the first place I played at. Um, I'll never forget. And you know, I had I had opportunities with Philadelphia, with that camp, um, Portland Trailblazers, Toronto Raptors. <clears throat> you know, but um, I had a guy that once told me. He said, now, "Leon, you could." His name was Sarge. Uh, he was. He was well known in the basketball community um, nationally. And he said, Now, Leon, you can be a big fish in a small bowl, or you can be a small fish in a big bowl. All right? Which one which one you want at this point in your life? You know, and I was like, hmm. Now, keep in mind, this again, this back in, in the early 90s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying basketball was a, was a lot different back then, you know? Um, I was like, You know what? I'm gonna try this. So, so the guy I told you about earlier, uh, Dave Atkins, 
my yeah. agent, he organized where the coach from Australia came down. And he organized the game. For some reason, I've been involved in all these little organized games so coaches can see me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. he came down to the coach and really um, see me and stuff. And the coach's name was Bob Turner. And he was another um, parental figure in my life when I got to Sydney. So I played there. It was myself and another guy named Mario Donaldson. So because the year before, Sydney had, um, I forgot who they had, but they had, they had train. I don't know if you know Dwayne McLean from Villanova. So they had. Yeah, Dwayne yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they had someone else, but they wanted to, to make a change from those two. So they're they looking at myself and Mario. So we went out there, we impressed the coach, flew us down to Sydney. Now, the guy I was replacing was like, I mean, pure muscle. Maybe like two, two fifty, two sixty, just steel. The typical power forward. Yeah. Now I'm coming in here now, the scrawny little kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From a small school. Yeah. And I'm supposed to replace him. I was like, okay, let's see, let's see. You know, let's see what he can do. Let's give him a chance. You know, let's give him about maybe a week or two and see what he can do, you know, before we cut him and, you know, have someone else. I'm not saying that's what they say, but I mean, you know, probably that's what they were saying. Yeah. So because the one that they were really looking at was Mario Donaldson. Right? He was more established. He came from the now the defunct CBA. So he had that professional experience behind him. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the dude was cold. He was cold. So you know, to Sydney and I'm like, again, the same mentality I had when I went to American University. The same mentality I had when I went to Briar Cliff is the same mentality I had when I went to Sydney. Is that, okay, you guys didn't really know about me yet, but I promise you, you will. You know what I'm saying? Because I know myself and I had a fear of failing. So I would do anything it takes not to fail. You know what I'm saying? So I went in that, that season and with not much hype. So I went down, I worked, worked my butt off and you know, coach, coach and the assistant coach, Mario Waddell, they work with me. I mean, even days that sometimes the teams would have a day off, they would have me in the gym working, 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 working. I'm saying so now I feel I'm ready to go. So the season start, <clears throat> took the season by storm. They had no idea what to do with me. The first season, they mm -hmm. had no idea because I was not the typical power forward. You know what I'm saying, yeah. Um, and coach did a he did a great job of hiding me at that time because I didn't have the strength at that time to really go up against a typical power forward. But we had a guy on our team, Dean Utah, that was called the Man Mountain, and he was a mountain. He was strong as an ox, right? Wow. And then we had another one. His name was Mark Dalton. We used to call him Tang, and he was strong as an ox, right? So. I had, you know, it was like, I'm in the middle. You now I had these two beasts on the side of me. So they actually helped me a lot my first season. They helped me quite a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, and coach kind of hid me on defense a little bit until I caught up. But <clears throat> offensively, they had no idea how to guard me. You couldn't put a big guy on me because I was too quick. Too quick, yeah. I would easily jump over him. They couldn't put a small guy on me because he couldn't stop me. And they had no idea. And that first year, I averaged 27, 27 and 12. Your first year? My first year. Wow. They had no idea what to do with me. And my second year, I pretty much did the same thing. Even though my second year, I didn't sneak up on anyone, it was the same thing. You know what I'm saying? About, about almost identical stats. So, because again, I had that fear of failing. So yeah. then I was like, I'm going to do whatever it takes. When I see you, out there partying or whatever, I'm gonna be working out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm gonna go to the beach. And that's one thing about Sydney, they have beaches all over. Yeah. I'm going to the beach and I'm about to run the sand. I'm about to run, I'm gonna get my legs strong. I'm do whatever it, whatever it takes, you know, to, to get ready. And and that's how I approached my entire career. You know, it was just um 
I always felt I was behind the eight ball no matter where I went. Even though I went to some places with great hype or whatever, I always feel, you know what, I need to earn this. Yeah, keep that I need, edge. I need to earn this. You see what I'm saying? And and that's how I approached my whole career. You know, but um, but yeah, man. But but Sydney was a Sydney was amazing. Sydney was amazing. You know, we used to play in the Sydney Entertainment Center. Huge. to think it pulled about roughly about ten ten thousand people. Wow. And that's where I get all these nicknames. I probably have, I probably got about four nicknames. And in Sydney, they had this guy in Sydney. He was the announcer. Yeah. And when I first got there, the first time he saw me play, he was like, man, we got to do a nickname for you. I'm like, okay. And he came up with Above the Rim. So it was like Leon wow. Above the Rim trimming hat. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it was hype, man, because in the game, you know, he would say, he was like, Leon plays above the rim. You know, and it was it was real hyped up. Yeah. And then I came up with Neon Leon. Someone came up with Neon Leon. They had a big old sign that says Neon Leon to apparently say, you know what, my game is up in lights. So um, Sydney was, was, for me, if I didn't go straight to the NBA, that could have been... I mean, that's the best spot I could have gone because, oh, yeah. number one, I was lucky to have a coach that cared about me not only on the court but off the court. Support I was yeah. lucky to have, you know, great teammates that um, want, wanted to see me succeed. You know, even even Mario Donaldson, because, you know, he came in there being the top dog. Yeah, the top dog. And I, over, and I overtook him. Even when I overtook him, he still wanted to see me succeed. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't selfish. He would, he would pass me the rock time and time again. Um, so I was just blessed to be around good people in the beginning of my career. And I think that's so important because you can start off your career, especially being a young kid, and you go around people who are selfish, um, who don't want to see you succeed, yeah. who want to rip you off. You know, and, and that can diminish your love for the game. That's true. You know, Very you true. Like, look, you know what? I, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, but um, I was fortunate that I wasn't placed in that situation. You know, and, um, and then you had all these endorsement deals come in. I'm here doing commercials. I'm here, you know, hip hop bread and my picture on Coke cans. And, and I'm like, wow, I mean, this is, this is nice. <laughs> 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 you know, so. Um, but yeah, man, it was it was a good ride. It was a very good ride. How was the how was the transition like? You know, outside of basketball, because you because you went from the Virgin Saint Croix to Puerto Rico to Iowa. Mm -hmm. You know, you going to you going all across the whole wall to mm -hmm. to um to Sydney. Like, how how was it like? You know, culture wise with Sydney, like the food, you know, music, you know, the day to day living. Well, I think I think um. Iowa prepared me for that oh, because okay. when I went to Iowa, to me, it was a culture shock. You know, it was like, whoa, number one, I've never seen snow before at the Iowa. So I'm seeing snow and, and the majority of people in Iowa and even the school I went to was, was white. Yeah. So they probably had maybe my first year, maybe five, six, seven black people on campus right so it wasn't yeah. um so they had me prepare for for living among people that's not the same culture as i am that doesn't look like like i do yeah um that may not talk the same way i talk you know because when i first got there you know i had my virgin Islands accent and it was strong and they would be like say it again i can't talk again you know they like to hear it yeah, but they don't yeah. really understand it yeah, you know, true. so it was, um, you know, it, it, it was, a, it was a, a transition. It was a huge transition. But, um, and even when I was there, again, I had people take me by the hand and guide me along. You know, I had a guy right on my floor. Um, that's my big brother, you know, Fitzgerald Grant. You know, he used to work security, but he was also going to school. And he got, I mean, he took me, he, he, he told me, 
you know, he taught me the ropes of college life. He taught me the ropes of, you know, playing ball. Um, then from there, there was a couple of my teammates, um, Carlos Rockshed, Amado Martinez, um, Alex Funes. I mean, you know, all these guys, we all were like helping each other, you know, because yeah. Amado and Carlos, the other two black guys, they're from Panama. Alex Funes was from El Salvador. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. So we had, so we had, all we had was each other. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And true. we, you know, and we bonded together. And um, I think that's how, that's how we got through our college years, man. And it helped me to adapt to different situations, different culture, um, different weather. So by the time I started traveling all over the world, it was almost like, I'm already used to it. You know, I'm already used to it. I went to South Korea, it was cold, I'm used to it. I went to Germany, it was cold, I'm used to it. You know, um, I went to, a, to Australia, where the majority is white, I'm used to it. See, so, so Briarcliff played a role in me in making my transition as a professional internationally a lot easier than otherwise it would be. Yeah, that's true, that's true. How was the re how was your reaction the feeling because you mentioned the endorsements and you know you mentioned you know being on a cold can how was that feeling like seeing your face on a cold can in the stores? Yeah, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, and that's just some of the stuff that I did when I was there, but it was amazing, you know. Um, and it wasn't just mine; it the shows. I think if I remember correctly, the shows. 12 guys, I think it was the 12 top guys that, that they endorsed. Out of 12 or 24, one of us. Okay, one, two, but nice. One guy from each team. The top guy from each team that okay. chose. Wow. So it was like, wow. I'm looking at a coat and I'm seeing my, my picture on there, my name on there. You know, it was like, wow. You know, who would have thought? You know what I'm saying? And not only that, but they also had, um, I'll never forget, they made a life-size statue of me. So they had me, one time I came to the practice facility, and they had me in this plaster. They put a plaster all on me, and they made like two holes by my nose so I can breathe. Yeah. And I was, I was covered in plaster until when it got hard, then they crack it and take it off me. And that was a life-size statue, and they put it in a sports store. And it's, the sports store was called Rebel Sports. And it's equivalent to, I don't know if you guys know about no, Academy. It's equivalent to like an Academy sports store. Yeah, yeah. Or a big sports yeah. store. Yeah, so Dick's, yeah. Sports yeah, Academy, pretty much yeah. the same thing. So they had a statue of me with my uniform hanging up in the stores. You know, wow. so, and I'm seeing this stuff. And also we have games and whatever. We have games coming up on the weekends. And I'm driving downtown, and I'm seeing my picture on a big billboard. Wow. Like, wow. You know, so for a, for a 23-year-old, you know, 23, 24-year-old, it can blow your mind. Yeah. You know, it can, it can cause you to get uh, big-headed, egotistical, you know. But, again, the team I was with, and I'm glad I was with a team that was full of veterans, you know, they kept me level-headed. You know, they yeah. kept me level-headed, and specifically, the three veterans that I can name was Dean Utah, um, Mark Dalton, Damian Keogh. They kept me, and Mario Donaldson, they kept me level-headed. So it never really got to the point where I thought, you know what, I'm all that. Never once that I think I was all that. You know, I had the stats, I had this, 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 but... It never crossed my mind that I was all that. And again, not only did it come from them, but I think it's part of your upbringing, how you were raised. You know what I'm saying? Um, never was I raised to think I was all that. My mom and dad would cut that out quickly. So, again, that's how, you know, I mean, it was, it was good to see. It was um, humbling to see, but it never got to the point where um, it affected how I play. Because as soon as I step on the basketball court, again, I had that fear of failing. And that used to drive me to exceed. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Did it? No. Was... Did it? Did, did it get it? 
at any point of time that they get uncomfortable, meaning like, you know, you see your name, you see your face or your name all over the place, you know, you on, on mm -hmm. items in stores. How was like the, how was like the fans? What it was the type of fans where when you go up somewhere public, they want your autograph, like you're being battered or was Sydney was more, you know, more relaxed where you could kind of live and breathe. Sydney was was more relaxed. Okay. Um, people will come up to me. I mean, don't get it twisted. They'll come to me and ask for autograph and stuff, especially after the games. Yes, they'll bombard you. But even when you go downtown or wherever, people will still come up to you. But it's not like they're rushing you. You know, yeah. it's like they respect they respect your boundaries. They respect like if I'm out with a friend or whatever, they're gonna respect that I'm out with a friend. You know what I'm saying? They may see me from a distance and be like. Okay, well, you know, turn in, can I get your autograph? Yeah, I will sign it quickly and keep it moving. You know, but that didn't really bombard me like that. Now, Venezuela, <laughs> that's a whole different story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's one place that I have extreme love for is Venezuela and Puerto Rico. Um, these fans are amazing. It was when I used to play there, um, they would actually say my, the whole crowd in unison would say my name. You know, it's like if I, if I get a dunk or whatever, they'd be like, Leon, 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 oh, in wow. unison. And it would be loud in there and it'll say my name. And they used to intimidate the other, the opponents. And when you go out, you're getting, you're getting bum rushed. When you go here, they're coming up to you, you know, but it's all in love. You know, yeah. it's all love, you know, um, Never once did I had anyone come up to me and try to test me or was aggressive towards me or anything. Never once in all the countries I played in, it never happened. You know, because I treat everyone with respect. You yeah. know, and I would take the time. I don't care. I don't care if I'm running late. I don't care what. I would take the time and try to sign every single autograph that was that was there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's and that's just me because I know how I was growing up. Well, again, when I used to look up to, you know, these guys coming in, you know, Caribs coming in, and I look up to Wanted with, you know, with Zola and those guys, and I'd be like, man, you know what I'm saying? And if I grew up and I talk to them, you know, they didn't just push me aside. You know, they would talk to me. Yeah. So yeah. I'll be like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna play forward. I'm gonna pass it forward. And that's how I went through my whole career. You know, nice. so I always had great fan support, um, no matter where where I go. You know, even I have a second page on Facebook, a second page, and it's maxed out, 5,000. And 95% of those are from Venezuela. Wow. You know, so it's, um, you know, it's a lot of love for Venezuela. Yeah. And it's really sad what's going on there right now. Very sad, yeah. That was that was a hot spot for athletes going there like you play your season and then you come home rest for a few weeks and you go to venezuela for the summer so it's like a vacation playing they're getting paid you know so it was a lot of fun so folks are either go to venezuela or puerto rico you know those are the two leagues that played during the summertime and um it was it was amazing so for the fans man i you know i got huge Man, I love for, for the fans from every place that I played, you know? Yeah. So. <clears throat> did, did you go to Venezuela after after Australia? Yes. I went and there how, after. So, so how so, many years you played in, in Australia? And then what, what made you decide to, you know, go to, to Venezuela? I played in, I played in Australia for four years. And, um. And even when I left Australia, I was still playing in a different country. But during my break, the summer break, I would always go to Venezuela. You know, so I didn't. It, it was like you have your main season, and then you come home, and then you play in Venezuela. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I would play in Europe or somewhere, and then I'll come home, and I go to Venezuela and play. And I did that for four years. It was almost like every other year. I was there in 98, in 2000, 2002, then 2004. And, um, and again, man, Venezuela was, was wild. I remember in, 
was it 2000, 2004? Out of 2002 or 2004, that's when we had Steven Jackson, right? So okay. Steven Jackson came down and the owner, Domingo, put us up in, in a house. So we in this house, just me and just me and Steve in this house. And man, we we had a ball down there. When I tell you, you guys see Steven Jackson now and he act crazy. That's how Steven Jackson is, man. He's crazy, he's straightforward, he don't sugarcoat it. Yeah. But if yeah. he's your friend, if he's with you, he's with you. You know what I'm saying? He's with you, man. That's that's one thing about him. That's his personality is that, hey, look, you cool with me? You cool with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um we had we had some wild times down there. But but yeah, every time I went to Venezuela, it was during my my summer break, quote unquote. And I could have either take the whole summer off or go and play somewhere else. And that's what that's what I did. Um Calvo Calvo White's a halo. He's a halo. Coffee? No, no, uh Calvo, Calvo White. Oh, Calvo White. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Calvo White, big time in the Virgin Islands now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal, I used to know I called him Cal when we were a national team. I'd be like, hey, Cal, what's up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, shout out, definitely shout out Cabo White. Big up, big up. The boy had arms about 10 feet long, man. They long arms. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. Hey, Cal, but I said, what's up, man? Definitely, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, I think he's watching, you know, so um, definitely big up oh, to okay. Cabo White. Yeah. You mentioned that you know the national team. How you know how many years you play with the national team, and like you know how was your experience like? You know, and, and uh -huh. you know the like what games did you play in? You representing the Virgin Islands? Uh, I man, I can't even remember all the games. And I played there. Um, I think it was four years I played for for national team. Um, but there's something I always used to rub me the wrong way, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I always. You know, I'm grateful for Usi for giving me the opportunity, you know, to travel to Cuba and, and different places and whatever. Uh, I'll never forget we played against uh, the USA, the Dream Team in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And the team, he didn't want to play against us, which I respected. But um, the one thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was we didn't have a coach from the Virgin Islands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, we had Sylvester Anderson. And, you know, Tempest Anderson was a, a good coach, but I used to always wonder, we have some of the best coaches right there in that small little island. Whether it's in course and Thomas, why didn't we have a Virgin Island coach? You know what I'm saying? So I think for me, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I love representing my country, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the back of my mind, I was always, why? Why, 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 why? You know, yeah. uh, we had we had Lockhart down there. We had Cornelius. We had Jarvis. You know, we had Donald Bow. We had, you know, we had coaches, and that's just in Saint Croix. You know, yeah, that's in, true. Not to mention the coaches we had in Saint Thomas. You know Saint what I'm Thomas. saying? So it just kind of rubbed me the wrong the wrong way with that man. But in terms of playing with the guys and um, having fun, yeah, we had a ball, man. We we we. We had a ball, you know what I'm saying? And, it, and it's funny now because when you look at, at these teams playing country against country, you know, you have these teams want to take pictures and oh, I want to take a picture with this team. Man, our mentality was that we don't want to take no picture with you. We trying to beat you. Yeah, you trying to beat you, you know yeah. What I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. our mentality. And it went down from every single player. That was our mentality. We trying to beat you. You know, we, we played against Team USA. We come out thinking like, you know what? We come out there trying to beat you guys. We don't care for no picture or whatever. If a picture get snapped or whatever, hey, so be it. But we're not trying to be out there like, you know, buddy, buddy. And all. No, we're trying to beat you. And I think that's for Virgin Islanders, man. That's, that's our mentality. And it comes from where we, where we were born, um, how we were raised. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're playing <laughs> in these leagues all over St. Croix, Hey, nobody ain't trying to be buddy buddy. You That's know what true. You coming yeah. out there trying, trying to knock, you trying to win this game. By yeah, all the will, the will to win. Yeah, yeah. And we took that with us, you know, on the national stage when we played against these different countries. You know what I'm saying so. Um, 
but I, I mean, I definitely enjoyed the experience. I mean, I have, you know, no negative thing to say with the guys. I mean, we had, we had a ball. Um, we won some games. The only game that really stuck out to me, I think we had a game against the Dominican Republic um, that we had to win and we won. Then we had the game in Puerto Rico against the USA team. Um, and we played, we played them pretty good for a while and it just took off on us. Um, so we always had that fight in us. You know, we always had that fight in us. And it's not going to take long before Virgin Islands one day win that gold medal. Now we got we got players all we got players in the league we got players all over. That's if true. Everyone if everyone come back and say, look, we want to do this just one time for the Virgin Islands. Hey, you know, yep. we're gonna cause some noise. Yeah, that'd be lovely, man. That would definitely be lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah that so. would definitely be lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, you man, know, so um, while while playing, pro, you know, while playing professional, you know. You know, Tegan, you know, we have we always have Tegan here. You know, he's part of the the, the podcast. Mm-hmm. He mentioned, you know, he mentioned that he played against you, you mm-hmm. know, um, Kevin Shepard. Yeah, he broke broke my ankle one time. <laughs> yeah. I'm out yeah, there, I'm out there trying or they trying to guard it, man. Who am I to guard Tegan, man? I mean, that's just you know, <laughs> that's suicide. Yeah. You know how, what I mean? so how was I mean, it like being able, you know, while playing professionally overseas, how 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 was it like feeling being able to play against someone else, you know, from the Virgin Islands? You know, we had, you know, we have had a lot of players from the Virgin Islands play professionally. Just to come to my mind, you know, Carver White, mm-hmm. Cockball Victor, uh, mm-hmm. Kevin Shepard, you know, Jaja Richards, you know, Andy Harbaugh. That's just to name a su- name a few. I apologize if I miss any <laughs> names, you know, but you Andy. Know, <laughs> yeah. So, how was it like just being able to, like, you know, like being you know, overseas playing, you know, because the Virgin Islands is a small mm. place, you know, we have so many yeah. different athletes, you know, so how was that feeling like, you know, you know, playing against, you know, the mm. fellow VIs? It was, um, you know, it was fun. Um, but I think for me, I don't think I've played against too many fish in the Virgin Islands. I played with a few. You know, like I had, um, I was able to get Jamil Haywood down with me to South Korea. Oh, nice. um, I was able to get even Jaja. One time I had Jaja and Vanderpool say it was the Virgin Islands. It was three of us. And we were playing in, um, I think it was Venezuela. Yeah, I think it was Venezuela. All right. So we were really three imports down there. Um, uh, and even when I was in, in Iowa, I actually had... A friend of mine, uh, Robert Joseph, came up there. He went to West High School, and afterwards he was gonna, you know, go to college where I went to, but it didn't quite work out. So I remember playing against um, anyone from the Virgin. I don't think I ever played against Keegan. I don't know if I remember I did. Maybe I did. I remember. I know I tried running at one time in practice, and that was a no-no. Um, yeah, I don't think I've played against. Anyone from the VR. Anyone from the VR. Okay. I, think I have. Yeah. I don't think I, I haven't. I know I definitely didn't play against against Andy on a professional level. I didn't play against him. I didn't play against Jaja on a professional level. Um, if I did play against Jaja, it was probably in Puerto Rico. If I did play against him. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking because, you know, and if Jaja is listening, man, I mean, he can chime in and help me out. But I think he was playing with Bayamon at the time, and I was playing with Ponce, with, with um, Santuse, um, okay. if I remember correctly. But in terms of us going head to head, I don't think I don't think I have, you know. So, yeah, we don't we can play against each other. We come together. That's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're on that one, especially yeah, when we outside, when we outside the country. Yeah, yes, we, yeah, yes, you know, man, we go together. Yeah, go together. So, that's true. That's true. That's true. So yeah, man. So it was, um, yeah, man. It, it was, it was a, it was a good ride, man. It was, it was a good ride. You know, I was able to get through without no major injuries, which is a, a blessing. Yeah, it's always, um, it's always a blessing. You know, so, so yeah. How many, how many years did you play professional? Fourteen. Fourteen. Fourteen years. Yeah. And I'll never forget my my last year I played it was in South Korea, and um, and I love South Korea. I mean, I, I 
I loved it. But after that season, I was, I was done. You know, I was done. And, you know, it was after 911 happened. So traveling now was becoming a pain because you got to go through all these security and do all this stuff. As a matter of fact, I'll never forget when I played in, in Israel. I played for Jerusalem, Hapur Jerusalem. And we were traveling to Europe to, to play in the Euro Cup tournament, which is like the second one under the Euro League. Yeah. We went to play in the Euro Cup. And we had like um like our version of Secret Service traveling with us <laughs> with the team. And at the time I was wondering why we had these guys traveling with us. But I didn't realize I'm with a Jewish team. You know what I'm saying? The Jewish team we're going down to Europe. So we traveling and we got off from the airport. We didn't even go through the regular we had our own security. So we went wow. through our own security and then they just whisked us into the bus. So we got into the bus. We had two police in the back, two police in the front of the bus, and we take off. We didn't stop for no stoplight. We didn't, it was just all the way down. So I'm like, man, I, I like this. I, I can get with this. So now we got to the hotel, walked into the hotel, hotel basically empty. First floor, completely empty. So we had the second and third floor. Fourth floor, completely empty. So they made sure the floor above us and the floor below us was completely empty. Wow. At the end of the hall, we had these two these um, law enforcement guys at the end of the hall. So it was like, man, this is some serious security going on right here. You know what I'm saying? But in terms of just us traveling, I mean, it got you know, it, it got really cumbersome. It got um, challenging. Yeah. You, you know, after 911, you got to go through security and security and security. And after the 14th year, I was just done. I was, I was done. I came back home and I told my agent, I said, I'm, I'm done. You know, I'm tired of living out of suitcase. I'm tired of the constant traveling. Uh, I'm done. To me, 14 years was a long time. And, you know, and that's why um, people ask me, do I miss it? And I'm like, no, I don't. Because I was able to retire my own time. That's true. You know, now if you if you are forced out because of the injury or you forced out because you're no longer any good, then, yeah, you're going to feel, like, you know what, I wasn't quite ready to leave and I can give a little bit more. But once you leave on your own terms, it's, it's completely different. You know, it's like, I'm done. I want to do something different now. You know, so. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, so I was ready to, I was ready to go. I couldn't wait to get home. <laughs> Took my shoes and hung them up, and I was like, that's it, you know. I and so the, move on to the next thing. During that time, where were you living? Like, you know, outside of playing professional. Were you, in a, were you living in the Virgin Islands, or were you living in the States? No, I was, I was living in Houston. Oh, Houston? Okay. I was in Houston, yeah. I was living in Houston. And that's where so, you reside um, now? Yes. Okay. That's where I was. So um, I used to come down here to visit to visit my sister because when she got married, that's where they came to, in Houston. So okay. during my off season, I would come down here and keep her company and hang out and stuff like that. And I liked it. So I was like, you know what? This is where I can, you know, I can make my, my life here in Houston. You yeah. know, and um, we didn't have all that traffic back then now. You can't no, it's get different than Houston. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. ridiculous. During um, your professional career, did you have kids? Or did nah. you have any? No? Uh -uh. Okay. Let me try to jinx me, mom, but let me try to. No, no, because I was going to ask you that. <laughs> you know, come on, why do you be like, no, no, he got he got three kids. I got him here with me. No, 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 no. Let me try to jinx yeah. me. No, I no, man, no, man, no, man. You know, because I was going to ask you, like, how, you know, how tough it was if you had kids to, you know, to mm -hmm. play professional and not being able to see them or not. You know, so. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's no. what I was going to ask you, but yeah, no. Yeah, I got, I got yeah but let me knock a wood, though. Let me knock a wood for you. <laughs> I can't work right now, yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. You know, Don't be jinxing me. No, man. Mike, I apologize <laughs> on that one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You know, so so Brother. so play playing overseas, you know, and you know, I played professional baseball and I was able to 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 play 
travel and play winter ball, you know, in, in, in a couple countries and stuff. And what mm. kind of stood out to me was just the different culture and being able, like at my downtime when I have a day off and stuff, being able to check out the city or the town and, you know, maybe go and check out the museum just to learn the history and stuff. Right. Were, were you able to do that, you know, a lot playing overseas in the different countries? Mm. Are you downtime? Definitely. definitely. You know, that that's one thing that um, I always try to do, um, especially when I went to, to Jerusalem and I saw all these biblical sites and places that read about in the bible and stuff and now i'm seeing these places you know in person um i'll never forget we went into a room in Jer- I mean, i'm in the old city now in jerusalem we went into a room and it was king david's tomb we went into this oh, room wow. and it was very very sacred you know you can even wear a hat in there you had to be extremely quiet so we went in there and then um we went i went to another room and we walk in and I asked the guy, which room is this? He said, this is the room he had the Last Supper. And I was like, wow. And that's, I had goosebumps when he said that. And I you know what's crazy? Fixed. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. No, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. No, why you I'm said telling that? you, man. I that's had crazy. goosebumps when he wow. said that. I was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the room he had the Last Supper. And he's showing me all these different places, man. We went, and then we had to go to, to Bethlehem. Now, to get to mm-hmm. Bethlehem, Bethlehem is not in, in, in Israeli territory. That's in the Palestinian territory. So, you know, Israeli and the Palestinians kind of hit head, bump heads and whatever. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So the manager for the team that I played for in Jerusalem had a friend in, in Palestine. So he had his friend meet me at the border. So he drove me to the border because he couldn't go over there. So he drove me to the border, had my passport, passed it to him, and I went through. Bam, I'm on the other side now in Palestinian territory. Then he took me down to um, Bethlehem. And you go to Bethlehem, and that's where you see, um, you know, the manger, Jesus, Mary, um, Queen Mary, the Virgin Mary. Um, you've seen all these stuff, man. It's like, oh, wow. You know? Yeah, that's amazing. And remember, I remember I had a couple in front of us, and they were holding hands. And the guy was like, no, 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 no. You can't hold hands. You can't hold hands. I'm like, wow. Wow. It's that it's that sacred, you know. So, of all the places that I went to, that was the most interesting in terms of um, sites and places I was able to visit outside of basketball. You know, that, like for me, raising up in the church, it was like I hear about this stuff all my life, and now I'm able to see it. It was just it just blew my mind, you know. And the thing about it is that I took some pictures. But back then, you know, you had those disposable cameras, those rectangular disposable cameras. Yeah. And now, for life of me, I don't know what I did with it. Wow, man. So, but I know it's somewhere around here. I'm going to find it eventually. Man, that's amazing. You know? So, yeah. It, yeah, so, you know, we just had um, Steven Pan had just, just come on. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it over to you, Pan, real quick. But um, Tegan just, um, you know, um, message mm-hmm. and, you know, Weapon, he said, hey, up. Kevin T. Yes, Shepard, he said, hey, up. He said, um, you know, their, their, their team just won the U-17 championship oh, in Atlanta. Cool. You know, yeah, so congrats yeah. to the, the VI elite. You know, congrats to Coach Basic, Coach mm-hmm. Tegan, and Coach uh, Malloy, and, uh, and all the kids them for that amazing job, man. So, you know, all the okay. viewers, them, whenever you guys got a chance, definitely, you know, you know, support, tell them congratulations and everything, mm-hmm. you know. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Congratulations. Stephen Hodge. Huh? Good, good, good night, Leon. <laughs> 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 oh, it's been ages upon ages upon ages. What's going on? Yeah, man. What's up, man? Right there, yeah. man. Right there, cooling. <laughs> right. Yeah. Man, I, I was on daddy duty, so I, that's why I was late, man. I know, man. I got you got Mumba here trying to jinx me with kids and stuff. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, weapon. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Th- this is the guy that made me jinx you or tried to jinx you because he sent uh-huh. a question. Uh-huh. Yeah, on, on my way here, on my way here, I asked a question regarding kids. I th- I was thinking maybe you know you got kids, so uh-huh. yeah, I'll take the I'll take the blame for that one. There. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ain't ain't no little weapon running around here yet. Not yet. Maybe okay, in the future. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> I had to tell her your pun. My bad. Right. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, my, yeah, man. Man. 
sorry for being late. You know what I mean? Um, glad to be here, though. But I was I was keeping my ear glued to the to the interview. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, glad I I able to join and catch you before you step away. Yeah, I'm good man. Good seeing you, man. Likewise, yeah, likewise. You've been, been having a good time here, so. Yeah, man. You've been going well. I'm saying so. Um, what what's been going on with you? Look at how I just I'm cut the end. No, it's I'm all good, man. It's all good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> You, you that part, but this, 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 this is about you, you know what I mean? These these people uh, that listen to me talk all the time, you know? So to make right, it about right. you. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, but, um, you know, we were just talking about how everything got started, man. And, I, you know, I was telling Mumba and telling the viewers that everything got started back back home, you know, in Safa Rally, as we call it, Rally right now. That's the way everything got started, you know? And you took whatever you learned from there, man. You took... The base and everything you learn from there, and you take it with you, and um, and that's some of the problems now with some of these kids is that when they receive that knowledge, they don't take it with them. You know what I'm saying, I mean, I work, I work with teenagers. I used to coach the um the college team UHD, and sometimes you give them knowledge and advice, and they don't really take it. And then when in the fall or fall, they're like, hey, coach, what happened? I told you, you know, I told you what you should have been doing. How you should have done it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna steer you wrong, but yeah, all we can do is keep trying, right? That's true, very true. Yeah, it's all we you can know. Do, man. When I was in when I was in high school, there was just always these four names that used to to ring across the island in the basketball nation. It used to be Zorro, Weasel, Cobra, and Weapon, but mm -hmm. there was there was we, we we could always see Cobra, we could always see Zora, we could always see Weasel, but there was always this mystique about your name, weapon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect one, you use, yeah. Perfect one, yeah. that's the perfect one. Yeah. Like. I couldn't come outside, that's why. My parents weren't having that, man. I can't, man, I tell my parents I'm, we got a league in, in the east side. I'd be like, where? Where you going? What? Nah. <laughs> It wasn't until I got older, man, like later in my teenage years, my parents kind of loosened, you know, loosened that a little bit and allowed me to do things. But for a while, man, I couldn't, I couldn't do all that. I couldn't do all that. You know how I used to, I, I had to bargain with my mom to let me go down to the West on Sunday morning to play. Mm -hmm. And I had to beg her because, you know, Sundays, that's time for church. You know, she's like, oh, you going to church? I'm like, man, I want to go down there and play because that's when, that's when we hooping is on Sunday morning. You know, everybody's down there on Sundays. I want to go down there and play. <clears throat> I had to bargain and bargain and bargain and bargain. But when she see that I was serious about about the sport, you know, again, that's when that's when I had the full support. You know, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, man, you didn't you didn't see me because I couldn't go out there. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but when I got older and I start we start going, I never forget we used to always go with Bow because Bow had this truck, like this mini truck. We used to all jump in the back. He'd take us all over the island to play or whatever, you know. And I think that's how you know people start to get to know me a lot more was when I when I started spread out a little bit. And um, but yeah, man, it was for a while. It was from home to central back home you know yeah, yeah. go to the boys club see and that's another place right there that we used to play was boys club so they used to have some leagues going on there Peter used to run some leagues there yeah, you know what i'm saying so we used to always be at the boys club playing man and i'll never forget you know it was, it was guts i didn't i mean i ain't seen guts in ages mike regalia you know it was canard it was you know i mean hey we used to have some runnings back back in those days man i don't know how it is now because i ain't been home in a minute but i know back then we used to have some running i used to have leagues all over the island all going on at one time you know so yeah, it's true we definitely need if it's not going on that way man we definitely need to get back to that because i always say i don't mind that's when you get into trouble you don't have anything to do that's when you get into trouble yeah that's very true very true you know <laughs> Man, if you if you have any ideas, you know you have any contacts, anything that you could, because we got we got people that's underground that's trying to do stuff, you know. So mm -hmm. you know, 
you know, we could always use some some help from a big name. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> well, um, Rico, Rico contacted me a few days ago. I mean, you guys know Rico. Yeah. Yeah, he contacted me a few days ago, and we about to have an event here in Houston. And apparently the um, the Virgin Islands Sports Commissioner is going to be here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely going to go, and I want to sit down and talk to him and, and see, okay, hey, you know, what can we do about the VI, man? I mean, we need to bring this up. We have, we got too much talent down there. Way, way too much talent. Yeah. You know, I am watch, I was watching a game earlier, the NBA game between Brooklyn and Boston, and you got a Virgin Island right there, Nick Claxton. A lot of people don't know that. He's a Virgin Islander. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we got talent all over, man. It's, it's quite possible we might have a head coach, a Virgin Islander head coach from David Vanderpool. I mean, we got talent all over. It's just a matter of having to, you know, get that exposure. You right. know, get that exposure out and um, let people realize that, look, hey, the VI ain't nothing to, to um, <clears throat> To joke with man that's yeah, joke with that's true you, see your talent down there, you know so so yeah i'm gonna definitely when i go to that event i'm gonna sit down and, and talk to him and um you know pick his brain see what see what he's thinking see where, where everything is going and, and go from there you know yeah so, you you then a good basketball state too mm-hmm. well one of the things i might always think about is um, our kids need need more invites to to tournaments in America, yeah. where they could they could get some exposure. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. money is a, a, a play, play a big part, but you know, mm-hmm. if we could get the backing of the Virgin Islands to to help sponsor some of these teams to travel, you know, like, but we we need some invites for them to even right. get the opportunity. Right, and that's one thing, man. Is that you know I know, you know, quite a few teams and schools and people up here in Houston. Um, you know, we can definitely work that out. Um, in terms of the expense, one thing about places up here is that they're very generous with, with the funds in terms of sponsoring. You know, so um, you can definitely look into that as well. But I think that, you know, and I know what what the guys are doing back home, man, like what Keegan is doing, what is always doing what McMillan is doing and, and others, you know, to help the youth. But um, I think if I can do my part from here in Houston, then yeah, you can have a pipeline to, you know, for the kids. You know, like I was talking with Steve Forbes, um, I think it was a few months ago. And I and I just posed the question, I don't know if you guys know Steve Forbes, he's the head coach of Wake Forest. Okay, and, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I just posed the question to him, you know, I mean, I mean, what are the chances of having a pipeline from the Virgin Islands that, you know, you can bring players up, you know, because the school I went to, that's what they did with Panama. They had a pipeline from Panama. So they had players from Panama coming in every single year. You know what I'm saying? And I think we can do that with with different schools, you know, Division One schools, because we have Division One talent. Yeah. So, you know, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach back out to him and um, try to get that try to get that going for sure. It's it's funny you mentioned that because there and that's kind of like the in thing now with a lot of schools. A lot of schools is kind of they have their their connection that pipeline where they're, mm-hmm. they're just getting a lot of athletes from that specific you know island or country you know and not letting them go somewhere else. You know they they keeping that talent to them. You know like I think right. it's Delaware State with with the girls volleyball. They have like a pipeline with Puerto Rico. Actually, Puerto Rico have a lot, a lot of pipelines to a lot of different yeah, universities yeah. and stuff, you know. So, like what you mentioned is is, is, is important and it's true, you know. Mm-hmm. You know that networking and trying to develop that connection and have a pipeline, you know. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's that's needed, man. When when these kids know that they have programs in the states that are actually looking at them, and you know have a serious interest in them, then you might see a change. Now you may see more kids taking it seriously. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because now they know. Okay, I have some place to go after this. You follow? But if they're going to high school and they're in the back of their mind, they're thinking, okay, well, what am I going to do after this? I want to go to college, but I don't have any outlet. What's going to happen? You know, they could easily lose motivation. Yeah, that's and, true. Yeah. And um, so if we can set something like that up, 
then yeah, you know, you just try to improve, man, and hey, let people see what what we have seen, you know, back in the VR. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, Pang, your your thing is on. We think about that, Pang. Pang, you're mute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's that's perfect. Um, I had to step away for a little bit. Um, somebody was at the door. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, but I, I did catch you, you when you started off saying about um your Steve Forbes at Wake Forest, but I didn't catch anything after that. Um, so, mm -hmm. but um, I'm sure whatever it is, I I, I think it's perfect. Um, with, with, with regard making a connection to to the states and and the Virgin Islands, anything they. And I think that's what we have been lacking for years, just, mm -hmm. just the exposure that our kids need. Um, now with all the, 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 the hurricanes, the mistreatment of the facilities, and no, you know, kids don't have really no place to play, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, you know, like um, just anything that the kids in the United States have access to that we don't have access to, like, right. you know, we just we just need a solid group of people to just you know put stuff together and having any type of connection up here would, would help yeah yeah most yeah, definitely man we definitely need to put it into play you know what i'm saying because at the point right now it's not it's not about us it's about them you know i always tell them man i say i already had i already had my fun i already played with my thing now now it's you you know it's all about you you're trying to get you the same opportunity and even better right to um you know to achieve so yeah, yeah it's true man i'm all on board what do you think okay. go ahead mamba no 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 you good you good go ahead go ahead man you good. what do you think what do you think about the state of basketball like how you know you you've been around for a long time what, what do you think about the kids up from the all the way from the kids Mm -hmm. to, to the NBA, like, what do you think about the state of basketball and do you like where it's at right now? Um, well, let me start with, with the kids. I think with a lot of these kids now playing AAU, um, I know when I was growing up and I played AAU, it was more of like a developmental situation. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to get, you're trying to develop these, these kids to play the game and train and, and so forth. And now I think it's going more from that, more so now to, okay, we got to win by all means necessary. You know, and now you have some kids that, you know, their parents are paying big money, but they're not playing. You follow me? Um, that's one of the reasons why, you know, every year I get asked to coach AAU and I always turn them down because I'm like, the only time I coach AAU is when I have my own team. Because when I have my own team, everyone is going to play. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to develop everyone the same. Um, that's just my personal view on on that in terms of the youth coming up. Um, with with the league, I think the NBA right now is so soft. I mean, I don't really. I mean, if a team is on, I watch it. But I'm not going to lose sleep to watch the team right now. I just think, right. I just think the league is way too soft. Um, you know, and it's no longer fun. You, you can't really play defense the way, you know, we grew up playing defense. You know, can you touch them? It's, it's a foul. It's, you know, it's just, you breathe too hard, it's a foul. And it's no longer fun to, to actually watch it, you know. But, I mean, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's still, still a huge money maker. I mean, all the kids still have dreams of playing the league, so... You know, what is my opinion on it? <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? But um but I, I really have I have a um a soft spot for for the youths though because I think a lot of these kids are not getting the development they need. Because I used to have my own training, um, individual training business. It was called Skills forty four. And I used to train these these kids and the mom would tell me, well, you know, he go, he play AAU and he go to practice and all the doing is shooting free throw. Yeah. You know, I'm like, well, he can't develop that way. You got to break it down in terms of, okay, well, this is how you dribble. This is how you shoot. This is your form. This is how you play down low. This is how you play on top. This is how you set a screen. This is how you flip the screen. This is how you do all these things, you know? 
And when I used to coach at, at UHD, um, you know, I used to break down everything when I used to coach my team. I used to break, break it down to the T, you know, and we had some good teams. And once we had a team where we played against Sam Houston State, and these boys quit. Second half, they couldn't play. Our defense was too tough. They quit. They said, look, we done. They had about four minutes left in the game. They walked off the court. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because in practice, I break down everything in terms of defense. You know, the stand, you know, okay, how you shadow the ball. A lot of these kids right now, they're not learning all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So now when they grow up, yes, they can run, they can jump, they can dunk, but it's fundamental. Do they have it? You know, that's the question. The last three MVPs in the NBA are not from the United States. You know what I'm saying? That's Fundamentals true. matters. It matters. You know, and they're not getting that right now. That's a good point you made. You know, that's a real good not, point. Yeah. Yeah, they're not getting that, man. So, you know, we need to have, go back to the basics and um, have coaches out there who, who want to take the time to really invest in these kids to teach them the game the right way, you know, um, not just for the money or whatever, but because you really want to see this kid, you want to see this kid improve, you want to see this kid have the skills, you want to see this kid go somewhere and make, you know, achieve the dream. And the only way they can do that is by learning the fundamentals and learning the skills, you know. And that's one thing I learned by playing overseas. So overseas, you go overseas, they don't care about all this dunking and stuff. Yeah, you get the crowd all hyped, but hey, you got fundamentals. <laughs> That's what they're looking at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why all these all these cats come from from Europe or wherever and playing the league. Every single one of them fundamentally sound. Luka Doncic, you know, you, you know, you can crawl and and run past them, but you still can't stop it. Right. That's very fundamental. True. Yeah, yeah. Fundamental. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, I think that's where the set of basketball is, especially in the US, is that the fundamentals are taking a back a back door to all the hype and dunk and and all this stuff. And you know, kids are really, they don't really know the game that, that well. I don't you know I don't know if y'all saw the clip with um Rick Barry the other day saying yeah. that um the, the, the ref needs to take back control of the game and start calling, traveling, carrying, and stop letting these these players do all the illegal illegal screens, all the illegal stuff that they do because it's it's killing the game. Like yeah, That's yeah, true. you want to see more points on the board, but like like you you want to see real basketball though, you know? Yeah, you sure do. You know, That's he true. had a point. Yeah, and I saw that too, and he was he was kind of mad too when he. Yeah, he, he was like, up, you know? yeah. yeah, and I don't blame him, man. You know, because yeah, so that's that's it's a sport that he he shed blood, sweat, and tears, and yeah, he's true. watching it now. I'm like, look, it's not the way the game's supposed to play, man. Right. You know, you you so. use the you made the right um the right term. Like I ain't losing sleep to watch an NBA game. I remember mm-hmm. I, it, there was a time where I'll be up. One o'clock in the morning until the, the yeah. final second of a game, but yeah. I don't. I don't even do that no more. I don't even yeah. try. Yeah. No, I don't even try, man. I'm like, look, mm-mm. you know, the team I watch the most is Golden State, and now they're playing like trash, and I'm like, look, I'm paying all this money for league pass to watch you guys play, and you guys are playing like trash. <laughs> I'm like, look, I may see you guys again until the playoffs. When right. The playoffs come around. Then we gonna then we gonna talk again. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's what fact, Yeah, and I was gonna text because I had you know one one of the assistant coach for Golden State. I know him pretty well. Um, Ron Adams. I was gonna send him a text and be like, well, I mean, you know, what's going on with with the Warriors, man? What's up? You know, but I don't know. We'll see. I might just yeah, save my money for a little bit until the playoffs start. <laughs> yeah, they're struggling. They're struggling. <laughs> And oh, yeah. I know I know you spoke about this um before I came on because I was watching. Mm-hmm. But I, I just remember being on the national team and like it, it just seems like every team we played against, like everybody used to ask, like, where's where's Leon? Where's Leon? Like, you mm-hmm. know, like um like everybody know you throughout the, the whole 
overseas platform like everybody know you like like the legend you ain't you ain't just a legend to us and if if nobody mm -hmm. tell you man just want to give you your flowers because your name mm -hmm. ring all across the nation when it comes to this basketball thing whether and, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a good thing for kids to know that you don't have to make it in the nba to be a legend in this game it's right. true right appreciate that man I appreciate yeah, that. yeah man you know it's Again, it's a lot of hard work, man. A lot of hard work goes into it, you know. And not only that, but your character. You know, you can go out there, you can have, you can have all the skills in the world, but if you don't have good character, the personality, people are not going to be drawn to you. You know, they're not going to, they're not going to want to associate with you. You know, so you got to have the total package. You know, what I'm saying you got to be approachable. You know, what I'm saying you go out there, okay, well, yeah. You got a fan coming up to you. You like, okay, I don't want to sign that. Wow, you fan paying the money to come in and watch you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're paying the hard earned money to come in and watch you. So at least you can do is take two, three seconds to sign your name and make the day. You know, yeah, man. and a lot of kids, a lot of kids that didn't, didn't do that, man. But they really, you know, that's something that. <clears throat> They didn't really care, care for doing is it's, it's signing autographs and stuff. And, and it, you know, and that's one thing that I always wanted to do, you know, and I think, you know, it came back and paid, paid itself back because wherever I go, people remember. You know, up to this day, I still get, I get emails, a ton of emails from people from the Philippines, you know, people from Saudi Arabia. And I was in Saudi Arabia for about three months. I was in the Philippines for six months. You know, I only been there once, but yeah, wow. they, rem yeah. they remember you. You know, they remember you. It says a lot. I got, I got um, a, a question. Uh, uh, so growing up, there was always this story. Mm -hmm. I used to take coins off the top of the backboard. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> uh. I know about taking coins off the back board. I mean, you know, I'll try, but I don't know about that, you know, but um, my vertical was up there though. You know, my mm. vertical was up there. Um, when I went to Toronto to to the camp and summer league and stuff, and you know, we, we went through all that testing or whatever, my vertical was over 40 inches, you know? So I knew I could have got up, but Again, all the stuff came back because I remember when I used to go, we used to go to Central during the summer and work out, especially me and Weasel. We used to call us a W, Weapon and Weasel. We used to always be like, you know, you see one, you see the other. We'd go to Central and we'd work out. You know, we'd go into the low workout session, the low workout area Lockhart had in the right hand corner. You know, we'd go in there and lift weights and whatever. Then we'd come out, we'd play. And we'd play maybe three, four games back to back, boom, 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 boom. Then after we finished play, we would walk out of Central, walk down the hill, you know, that big hill from Central and go to the grocery store, buy a big old thing of juice, drink all this juice. Now that's a lot of walking. She's still exercising your legs. Yeah. That's not even it. Now we walk in back up the hill to catch, to catch a taxi or even to catch Bao. He will take us down to the west. Now we get to the west side, Bob used to drop us off on the main street and we would walk in. So we walk in home, we used to go to to the football or soccer field in Arthur Richard and we used to run sprints. Now wow. keep in mind all this stuff on the same day. We used to do that every single day. So Jeez. my legs was extremely strong. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah, jumping and, and all this stuff to me just came like second nature you know um keep in mind i was a buck or five so it didn't take much to <laughs> you know to fly up but um but yeah you know i used to definitely work on my legs a lot you know and i got them as strong as possible and um when they told me that at the corona camp i was a little shocked i was like 40 I'm like goodness i need to get to 50. <laughs> you, they, they you didn't probably quite, didn't quite get there though Close, you probably, close. You probably yeah. answered this already, but how many how many um workouts did you get after college? I'm about to I'm about to change this and put.
this um thing in. Yeah, yeah, no worries. All right. All right. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Wait, I can hear you better actually. Okay, cool. Um, okay, how many on, how many workouts did you have offers did you have after college? You probably answered this already, but forgive me if you did. Um uh, after like you mean professional? Yeah, well, well we had NBA NBA. They had um they had a few teams that scouted me when I was at, at the school. Um, I remember the sports director would tell me they had a few teams that scouted me. And my one time he told me Lester Connor was coming to a game. He was a scout for the Lakers. Um, and then they had, um, I think it was Seattle and I think it was Denver. It was some of the teams. But back then, even when I was in college, you know, I played, I played the four and the five when I was in college. Mm -hmm. So my outside game, I couldn't pass 15 feet, free throw line extended. No, I ain't, I ain't taking no shot. You know what I'm saying? But down low, I'm going to destroy you down low. So, and I was I was 6'6". Six, six. So a lot of these teams, they saw me and they're like, okay, you got you got skills, you got a building or whatever, but if you get to the league, you're not going to be playing center. You see what I'm saying? Now, it would have been perfect if – it was in this time because now nah, it'd have been like good. He can be a small, you know, small ball center. See what I'm saying? But now it's like back then it was totally different. Yeah. So, and that's when I told Mumba earlier that the, the guy came and told me, okay, well, because they wanted me to come to some of these camps and rookie camps and all this stuff, and he was like, well, you can be a big fish in a, you know, in a small pond, or small fish in a big pond. All right, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be this big fish, and um, and that's when I was talking to the guy who eventually became my agent, um, Doc Atkins, and um, he had, you know what? They sit, we got Sydney on the table, you know, and I did some research on Sydney, and I was like, man, this is a pretty big city. This look like Los Angeles, you know. As a matter of fact, we even had the same colors as Los Angeles Lakers, gold and purple. So it was like, okay, I kind of like this, you know, playing a big old stadium and stuff. So, yeah, you know, I decided to take that as opposed to taking my chance and, you know, and going for the league and stuff, you know. Um, and I still had, uh, you know, I had opportunities. I was at Philadelphia uh, back camp when John Lucas was the coach. Um, we had Sean Bradley. We had Clarence Witherspoon. And so Gary Grant and then um, Dana Barrows, that's my boy right there, Dana Barrows. We used to hang out. Was, yeah. And um, and then, then when I went to Portland, and that's when we had Rashidi. And Rashidi was on me, man. He was like, yo, hey, you can hoop, man. You can hoop. He was like, he was on me. You know what I'm saying? I make a mistake, he coming straight to me. He was funny. You know, he was extremely funny. And um, then the last one, was with Toronto. Mm -hmm. And that's when I thought, okay, well, this, this is the best opportunity that I have to make it because I was at the summer league and I, you know, I, I hooped out in the summer league. Um, everything was going well. You know, they all liked me when I was at Toronto. And, um, but the coach was like, I don't know. He, you know, he's from a small school. I don't know if he can hang with the big boys and blah, 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 Jeez. blah. So I was like, all right. I wasn't tripping because I know I had opportunities overseas. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't yeah. like, um, hey, you know, I need this is life or death. I need this. I was like, OK, hey, let me go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I got a good yeah. thing going on overseas as well. You know, and um, so, yeah. And then come to find out a couple of weeks later, he brought in um, Percival Pringle. Um, Pringle, which is Master P. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> You're gonna release me and bring in Master P in my position. Now, I can see why he got fired this year. You know, <laughs> decision making. And after that, I was it's like, you crazy. know what? I said, I, I, I said, I, I'm done. I was, I was like, I'm done. Until um, the Wizards came. The Wizards came knocking. So, and that's when Jordan was the president. Jordan was the president. Leonard Hamilton was the head coach. And they had an interest in me. As a matter of fact, Derek Harper at the time 
he was with um, with Washington in the front office, he came down to Houston and spent a couple of days just to get to know me as a person, you know. So we down there talking or whatever, um, checking it up. And um, just when I think, okay, bam, everything about to work on here. I go to Washington, then Leonard Hamilton got fired. And I think Jordan Jeez. got um, pushed out. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to stay where I'm at. I'm going to finish my career overseas, and I'm good, you know. Because for me, it wasn't it wasn't desperation. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't desperation. I could understand if I didn't have opportunities overseas, then I might have approached it differently. I'd yeah. have been probably more desperate, and I might have played harder. I might have done – you just never know. But in the back of my mind, when I knew I had opportunities overseas, and I loved the life overseas – to me, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. I went down there, enjoyed the experience, and I was ready to fly back overseas and do it over there. You know, so, yeah, so I mean, well, I don't know if it's Pang Taylor or you, Mom, but one you guys said it, man, is that some of these kids put everything into the NBA, and if it doesn't work out, they get depressed. I'm like, look, there's a big league, a big league out there. You know what I'm saying? You go to Europe, you under FIBA rules. I say FIBA rules essentially is bigger than the NBA. You know, the Olympics is played under FIBA rules. Is, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, look, there's a big, there's a big league out there, man. I mean, hey, the NBA ain't in ain't, ain't the end of it. You know, you can still make a good living. Um, you can still get notoriety. You can still get all this stuff sure. internationally. You know what I'm saying? And now the time we're living in with social media and all this stuff, they're gonna find you. Doesn't matter where you at. You got game. The NBA is gonna find you. Right. They're gonna come and find That's you true. in high school. I, but I think That's they true. find you too. I think they find you too early though. And give these kids too yeah. much too hype before before they even make it out of middle school. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, and that's something that they gotta definitely do something about that because um. Sometimes they be coming on scout kid in middle school AAU, and I'm like, oh no, because yeah, now these yeah. kids not, because now they're not gonna want to study. Right. They're gonna think I'm going to the league. It ain't that easy. Yeah, that's true. You know, I always tell these kids, man, and I and I mentor a lot of kids, and I work with a lot of teenagers. I always tell them, make sure you get that that degree. Make sure you get that. I don't care if you want to go when you leave school or wherever you want. Hey, more power to you. But make sure you get that because you can step on a basketball court and the first game you can have a career and an injury. Now what? You have nothing to fall back on. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's important that you get you have that degree because once you get that, they can't take that from you. And now you have something substantial to fall back on in case basketball or whatever don't work out. Or any sport doesn't work out. You know, and I always try to stress that to them, man. Stress, stress. But these kids are like, no, oh, no, I'm going to the league. I'm like, hey, go on. I'll see you. <laughs> it's true, man. Especially when you could get a degree for free, too, man. You know? Yeah. You can you know ask anything exactly. better than that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that when I went to school and coach offered me a full ride, I knew I wasn't going to leave school early. Even if I had opportunity to, I was not going to leave school early to go and play when I got an opportunity to get a full a degree for free. Yeah. I didn't pay a penny when I was at school all four years. I didn't pay one cent. Mm. As a matter of fact, I even had my own dorm all four years. All four years. Wow. I'll never forget the first year when I went up there, I had a roommate, you know, and he came in there and I remember I told Coach, I was like, Coach, I got a roommate. He said, yeah, you know, they can give you a roommate. You're a freshman. I'm like, man, coach, I don't, I don't really want a roommate, though. You know, I mean, keeping my eye point from the Virgin Islands, I'm not used to the culture yet. You yeah, know? true that. That's I want true. to be by myself. So I'm like, the coach was like, I don't, you know. A coach had a lot of pull at that school, a lot of pull. So I was sending him all this stuff, and I was like, he's like, yeah, but, you know, you're a freshman. You got to have a roommate. I said, coach, but you know what? We may have practice, we may have a game, and he might want to party, and then I won't be able to sleep. 
and he might be snoring and I can't sleep. I can't get my rest. If I don't get my rest and I can't play, <laughs> that's all I had to say. That's all I had to say. <laughs> After that, I had my, my, my same room all four years. Never had a roommate. Beats. That's what I'm that's real, I just want to say something real quick on that part and I, I had it back to you. You know, I never thought about that, but it's true. You know, like yeah. going into college, you, it's like it's different. You know, like just having a roommate, you're not used to that, especially coming from back mm -hmm. home, you know, like having a roommate and stuff like that. Yeah. So when you were saying I was laughing because I was thinking, I was like, man, you know, you're yes. right, man. I never thought about it's it. True. It's true. It's kind of uncomfortable. I, I was lucky. My my roommate was was my brother. So I, I ain't really. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> you had it made, man. You had it That's made. Yeah. Yeah, was, I was two, was two years it was it was which which made it good for me because he he found his wife early in school so he mm. was i was a whole crib so i always had the room to myself mm. so. yeah. <laughs> you gotta have that man i was yeah you, i was lucky to have my own room i was like man i don't want nobody up in there i don't you, know the, i don't know this person from adams i don't know Right, I don't right. Know it's tough living with somebody. That's when you know somebody true colors and and you yeah. end up taking people sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know? sure. But as soon um, as I, as soon as I mentioned, as soon as I mentioned how we can jeopardize the the practice and the games, the coach was like, uh, uh I can't let anything jeopardize these practices and games. Now I'm gonna take care of that. <laughs> he took care of it. I don't know how we did it, but he took care of it. You know. Something, something stuck with you. me um, when when you were saying about you have to you had to get your degree. Mm. Where where did that mindset come from? Where who instilled that in you? Because most kids, especially when they know they're good in playing basketball, you know they they turn into these one and done, two and done. You know they they just want to make it to the league. Like what what was flowing through you? Where did that came from? Where you had to stay your four years to get your degree? From my parents. Can you imagine me going back home the version and telling my parents I didn't get my degree? <laughs> and it was free. <laughs> no, man. They weren't gonna hear that. They weren't they weren't trying to hear that, man. They're like, look, you got a free, you got a free four year, man. You better take advantage of it. Right. And um, so yeah, it was my parents. It was nothing more than my parents, you know. It made me like, look, I'm getting this stuff. I'm not leaving here early. I'm getting this stuff before I leave here. You know, and it was a good moment because when I graduated, my dad flew all the way up from the Virgin Islands to to Sioux City, Iowa, and he was there for my graduation. You know, and um, and he was so proud, man. It was like when when they called my name and I walked up, I remember seeing him standing up. You know, it was like you know, it's a proud moment. You know, yeah, it's, it's a proud moment. Wow. So, you know, I'm, I always tell tell these kids, man. I say I'm a huge advocate. For education, you know, make sure you get the education, man. The time we live in, make sure you get that. You can still achieve anything you want to achieve, but make sure you still get that that education, so you have something to to fall back on. You know, so, yeah. that's, that's a good that's a good message for the kids to hear. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. all these kids, like you, they they're just so NBA driven. You know. They want to be yeah. the next Steph Curry. They want to be the next John Morant, Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. uh, LeBron James. So everybody just in a rush to get into college and get out. Yeah. They ain't even trying to One stay. And I, I don't know if I ever um, watch the story about um, what's that guy named for that just get traded to Brooklyn from the 76ers. Um, oh, Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Yeah. I know Ben Simmons. I used to play against his dad in Australia, Dave. So if, if, if y'all never see his see his story, watch it. Find find a videotape of him and, and watch his story because when he was in his one year when he was in college, uh, and he from the very last game that he played on the season, he said he just stopped going class because he already knew he was going to the league. Mm, so he just yeah. never go to class anymore. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That was crazy. Yeah. And that's a bad example, man. Right. It is, yeah. And that's why it don't surprise me the stuff that he goes through to the league. Like people 
he, right. he's not a, he's not a, a team player he's not yeah, a exactly a people person he's not because he, he used to be a loner on the campus because he just mm -hmm. had his mind just focused on making it to the league so right. he, he never really take the full experience of college like college uh, develop mm -hmm. you for life and, and people don't know that you know what i'm saying like exactly. college is important you know whether whether you just want to go and experience it for a year or two but mm -hmm. go ahead take the opportunity because and for everybody don't get me wrong and for everybody but take the opportunity for the experience and and be the be your own judge and and take from it from whatever you can take from it because it could help you in life for, sure, for the long yeah. run yeah that's a good that's a good that's a good um point punk because um you know, like for instance, you have you have some kids out there looking up to him right now. He's their yeah. idol. You know what I'm saying? So when they start digging in his background and realize, okay, well, he didn't go to school. Well, guess what? I don't want to go to class either. Cause he didn't go. And he's in the league, so I can be in the league. You see what I'm saying? So he's setting a bad example. And kids are gonna try to emulate that. And it's not gonna work out in their favor. Facts. Yeah, you know what true, I'm saying? Man. And um true. That's not good, man. That's not good. My thing is that if you know you're leaving after one year, okay, finish out the year. Finish out strong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, go to your class, finish out strong. I mean, to, to just, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's, hey. You know, how, uh, how was his dad as a player? Oh, Dave was nothing like, like Ben. I mean, <laughs> Dave was just strictly inside, but he was strong. He was a good physical player, man. He was, he was playing the full position. So we used to go up against each other all the time when we played each other. And um he was strong. He was he was a bowl down low. <laughs> you know, he was about probably six, what probably six, eight-ish, I would say. But um he was he was a good player, but never talked trash. Well, he never talked trash to me. You know, he just mm -hmm. let his game, his game spoke for itself. He never talked trash and stuff, and you know, I mean <clears throat> He was, he was a good player. He's a post player. Ben is more of an outside. I mean, Ben got skills down low, but Ben is more of an outside player, point guard or whatever. But, um, but yeah, but his, but dad, his dad was strictly down low, you know. And his dad played for probably, um, if not between Sydney and and Melbourne, probably two most popular teams in in Australia. Was the Melbourne Tigers? Because mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys heard about Andrew Gaze. I don't know if you guys heard about no. him, but Andrew Gaze was Steph before 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 Steph was Steph. You know I'm saying is. this man, he was about six seven with range, coming from half court. Jeez, you know, and six, um, with range, I'm gonna tell you range. I mean range, and he was he was local. He's from he's from Australia. You know, and he he played in the league for a little bit with the Bullets, I think, and then um played all over. But I mean, this man had range upon range. You know, and that's why the, the Tigers were so good year in and year out. You know, because of Gays, and he was coached by his dad, who's a legend back in Australia. So that team used to give us, yeah, they used to give us some issues, man. But whenever Sydney and Melbourne play, sold out. It was sold out. Um, I can imagine, man. Where they used Jeez. to have, where they used to hold the Australian Open, that was a gym that the Melbourne Tigers used to play in, and the top was would open. It was man, it was a beautiful arena, man. And once you go in there and the crowd start going, it's over. What? Why do you, you mention the Andrew Gaze of of the world? Like, what do you think? Uh, there's so many players that you know have opportunity to make it to the league, and they don't even probably don't even see the court sometimes but then they go overseas and they just flourish and to be these superstars like what what do you think mm -hmm. of, we see so much of, of, of that you think the league is just straight politics there's a lot of politics in the league definitely a lot of politics um i just gave you guys one um you know butch carter chose master p over me master p came from the basketball but he just chose master p for for the image popularity you know yeah. to bring some popularity yeah. to, yeah. to the yeah. views yeah, yeah. Exactly. ticket prices all that yeah yeah exactly you know so 
But um, but yeah, there's a lot of politics. But when you go overseas, you know, number one, these teams expect more from you. So they put you, they put you in positions, they put you in sets where you can excel. Because now you you probably the one, the first or the second option on the team. You know what I'm saying? So now you got a chance to develop your game that you wouldn't have the chance to develop back in the league because you know they got the stars, they got they got the players they're gonna play, they got all that stuff. But now you go overseas. You're the main guy. See what I'm saying? You're yeah. the guy they're looking for to score, rebound, defend, win. So, so yeah, so that's why a lot of guys, when they leave the States and go overseas, they excel, and now the NBA sees them, and now they want to, okay, let me bring you back. Yeah, bring you back. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now I see you improve, but let me bring you back and see what you can do for us. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? So, true. yeah, you see that a lot for real. You definitely do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of players, man, they go overseas and you know they just they blow up. You know, you wonder, wait, why you didn't do that when you were in the states? Because opportunity, they didn't get the opportunity. Yeah, you know, uh, opportunity, you overseas, you get the opportunity. The opportunity yeah. is big, man. Opportunity, you know, you could it be is. you could be amazing, man. But if you don't get an opportunity, you know, you know, it is what it is. You know, you just got real. Uh, you know, another part. Yeah, it's true, man. That's important. It's, and, and when you get, you just gotta make sure you take a full advantage of the opportunity. That's the next thing too. You gotta take. Yeah, because it could be you gotta your take full advantage. Hold. Yeah, you gotta take full advantage, man. If not, especially international, <laughs> you get two bad games. They're gonna send you home. Yeah, it's, T. I always talk about that. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna send you home back. How many? Yeah, how many um, languages you learn in your travels? <laughs> one spanish it's the only thing i learned was spanish because i played because in Sp i played in argentina i played in venezuela puerto rico and spain so i think when i played in, in those spanish countries i kept you know when you hear it day in and day out eventually you're gonna pick it up that's true you know you're gonna pick it up bam and i'll never forget when it actually hit me was i was in venezuela you know and i had I had a, a personal driver. He would drive me to practice, to the games. We hang out, everything, right? Um, that, that's my boy, Julian, man. So, um, but he couldn't speak much English. He understood it, but he couldn't speak much English. But one day, when he came to pick me up, I think we were, I was going to practice. He was speaking in Spanish as as normal, and I could understand what he was saying. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I said, speak again, speak again. Abla, abla, abla. He was speaking, and I understood every single word that he was saying. <laughs> so it's like it just, bam, just like that. You know, I was able to pick it up. You know, but it's after, you know, hearing it day in and day out for years, finally just stuck. And I was able to understand what he was saying. You know, now my Spanish is maybe 50 60 percent because I don't really use it here in Houston. You know, y'all I mean, remember y'all remember that scene in, in Love and Basketball when um the girl made it overseas and the coach was talking and then one of the teammates had to explain like what, what the coach said and she was like, just passing down to you. Like was that yes. most of them experience? <laughs> 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 yep, yeah, that's what it is, man. You have a you have a translator. Like I had oh, when I was in, in the Philippines and in um South Korea especially. And and um, Tokyo, they had translators, so they would be they're like my right hand man. They'd be with me everywhere I go, and they would translate everything, you know, because it was no way I was gonna learn that language. Mm -mm. I was gonna learn uh, even when I was in Germany. I was never. I wasn't even trying to learn German when I was in Germany, because <laughs> yeah. when they speak, it seemed like they was mad at you. You know, it's like it's a hard language. Like, oh, God, God, God. I'm like, no, I ain't trying to learn all that. You know, so I just stuck with English and Spanish. Spanish I, I'm, yeah. I'm good. That's good enough. You know? What yeah. are your What are your former players? Just made, wrote a message on um, on Facebook. Uh, Dominic D. Best. He said, "Play for coach. Dominic Best." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, "Play for coach." Trimingham was a blessing. He taught me about life as well as the game. I wasn't a top five talent, mm -hmm. but he made me a defensive specialist for him. Yeah, so definitely big up. Yeah, to, he to was. Uh, yeah, he he could play some defense, man. Dominic, that's 
that's what you can do. You know, I mean, we used to go back and forth. My one year I coached him, and the team that I had that year, they weren't as talented. But when I tell you they played hard, man, they played hard. And I had Dominic all over the court, playing point guard, playing everything. And, you know, and they gave it their all, you know. But his main forte was was defense. And whenever I see him slacking up, I'd always go and tell him, man, I said, look, you're not playing no defense, man. This guy's going on you. That's all I had to tell him. Yeah. Pick it right back up. Right back up. You know, so, so yeah, man, that's a, he's a good dude, man. He got, he got married. Too. I hope he's still married. I hope he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. So, I know. That's cool. You knew when you was going to pretty much retire on your own terms. How, how was it like transitioning outside of basketball? Because, you know, you always see stories on, you know, different sports network about mm-hmm. athletes struggling, life after football, baseball, mm-hmm. basketball, hockey, soccer, the list goes on and on. How, how was it for you? Was it an easy transition? Was it difficult? Did you know what you wanted to do pretty much? Mm-hmm. I knew that I wanted to get into counseling, which is what I do now. I knew I wanted to do that. Um but before I actually got into it fully, you know, I had some, you know, some scratch. I had an itch. I was like, look, let me try my hand at coaching. And that's when I coach at UHD. Um, then I also coach uh, the USA national team for athletes with IDD. You know, wow. then I had my own personal um, individual coaching business. So I would still get my fix. You know what I'm saying? So I never quite felt like oh man i miss i miss playing i miss i never really did that and especially at uhd you know because my players would always challenge me they'd be like coach man you know i I seen you on youtube can you still do this can you still do that come on coach and they would challenge me so all that competitive edge used to always come back out you know always Mm. come back out so um i never went through that stage where you have athletes who retire and they go through depression or they feel like, you know what, I'm not ready and all this stuff. Because um, as I mentioned earlier, I was able to retire when I was ready. I wasn't forced out um, because of not being able to, not having the skill set or injuries or whatever. I was able to leave when I was ready. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and that's a big difference is that when you leave, when you're ready, as opposed to being forced out, it's two complete different things, you know. And even when I when I left, I still got my fix because I was still involved in basketball. So it didn't, it didn't really affect me at all. Did, nice, man. did you ever have any major injuries? And if you did, how was the, the recovery process? How hard was was the the, the only one that I had, I never had any knee injuries, and that's a that's a blessing because I think blessing, your yeah. knees, that's the wheels. You know what I'm saying? If your knees go, it's like for basketball, it's like, hey, <laughs> you it. can't do anything. Yeah. So the worst that I had was a uh, um, dislocated shoulder. And the way how I got that was I was playing in, in Seoul, South Korea. And I'll never forget this one guy went for a shot and I went up to block it. But I didn't realize exactly where I was on the court. And I went straight up in between the rim. See what I'm saying? So my hand was in between the rim. And when I swung forward, it hit the inside of the rim, popped right out. Wow. So I was like, ah. So I went to the bench with the trainer, and he popped it right back in. Boom. And I went back into the game. And I kept on playing. Now, the next morning, I couldn't even lift my arm. It was that sore. And um, I did a couple of rehab, but I guess I tore away so many tissues and stuff from it that it became now chronic. So sometimes I'd be in a game and any little touch, it would just pop out. And it got to the point where I would just shake my shoulder and it go right back in. And um, I realized that, look, I can't continue my career like this, man. I mean, sometimes it'll come out when I sleep, you know. So when I came back to... I came wow. back to Houston and I had a, um arthroscopic surgery. And you know, in about three, four months I was I was back playing. Mm-hmm. And that's the only serious injury I ever had. You was definitely blessed. 
Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Nice man. In injuries ruin a lot of people, a lot of talented um, kids' career, man. Mm hmm. Even before sure it has. You know, so I was just lucky I never had that type of injury, man. I never had no knee injury like that. I mean, gosh. I never had no um, Achilles injury. You know, so yeah, it was definitely a blessing. You know, so, but yeah. But it was tell good, us, man. It was good. It was good. It was a good ride, man. It was a good ride. Tell us, <laughs> tell us um, outside of basketball ways or outside of basketball ways, um, the, mm -hmm. the, the best thing you saw or the best place you've been in, in your travels, um, and, and mm -hmm. you know, like your why. I you see my question, like, man. Oh, I stole your question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, you good, brother? We the team. We a team. Um, we a team. <laughs> great man, stinker like. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. Um, I would say the best place, um, for me in terms of um historical um sites and stuff was definitely when I was in Jerusalem. Mm. That's one place that I would definitely go back. Um just to see all those places again. And for me being, you know, raised up in, in, in a church and stuff like that with a Christian family, um, that played a big, a big part to, to be able to see it, you know, to see what is being said in the Bible. Now I'm putting, I'm putting an image to it. I'm actually seeing it in person, you know, the Western wall, I'm actually seeing it, you know, Mount Olive where Jesus went back up in heaven. I'm actually seeing it, you know? So I think, um, Jerusalem, I mean, but by far, I mean, for me, you know, now when it comes down to just having fun, now it's, it's a, it's a three way tie between Buenos Aires, Venezuela and Sydney, you know, those three places I had a lot of fun. I mean, extreme fun. So, so yeah, those are my places right there. In, in Jerusalem, were you were you going through the caves and and seeing all the, the writing on the walls and the you you see all that yeah you see um amazing, went through the caves um the one place that I didn't I, I didn't go to was I didn't go to the Jordan River and that's one place I wanted to go to the Jordan River I didn't have a chance to go there but I've seen basically everything else um, we saw where you know he was crucified on the cross and they were telling me this is the exact spot that he was wow. crucified on, on the cross no they actually built around it to make it a tourist attraction mm -hmm. but they were telling me this is the exact spot right and i was like wow for real you know what i'm saying so then we went down to to the um the, the dead sea all right where you're going there you just start floating you can just lay down and just start floating in the water. All right. Wow. Apparently, it's the lowest point on Earth, and um, that was that was amazing. All right, just to walk in and just lay down and just start floating. You can't drown in there, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, so you, I saw a lot when I was there. I definitely saw a lot. Now I didn't see the, the actual cave when you know when he was dead and he, you know, he resurrected again. I didn't see that cave which i wanted to see but most Do they allow people just go in there and see yeah yeah okay, everything every place is like a, is like um tourist attraction now down there so you know i didn't get a chance to, to go there and check it out but um yeah because even in the dead sea when you come down like you're going down a hill when you're coming down the hill you see the you see the dead sea and you see they have hotels and everything there so it's like, yeah, it's a tourist attraction. Oh, wow. Yeah. Get it built around it. You know? I didn't even know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Man. Look, you got two, yeah. two reasons to go back. The Jordan River and, and to see that cave. Yep. Exactly. But the reason why I'm going back, man, is that all that security. Because when you go into Israel, you have to go through the regular security we go through, right? Then you go through their own security when you're going to Israel, you know what I'm saying? Which is like, okay, I just went through this stuff. No, you right. got to go through it again. And that's for, that's for their own security. 
So they're pretty tight on it, man. They're, they're, they're not playing around in Israel. They're not playing around at all. It's serious. And I'll never forget when I was when I was flying there, it was I was like, okay. And they had these um Orthodox Jews and about five or six of them they gather. And I was like, I'm watching like, what's going on here? You know, I've never seen this before. And then they started like they started praying and they started doing this stuff like like this. And that just freaked me out. I'm like, wait, hold up. What's going on here? You know, I, I know what's going on. So I asked the guy next to me, what's going on here? He said, no, 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 they're just praying. They're just praying. It's Orthodox Jews. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, because i never seen them before. You know, they had a big hat on, the long the hair coming down right here, and, and all black. So, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was an experience, you know. But um opened my eyes to a lot of things. It opened my eyes to a lot of things, man. I've seen a lot, um, experienced a lot. Um, you know, that's why it takes a... I mean, I don't really get stressed out that much. I've I've seen so much. I've, you know, nothing surprised me now. You, know? you, you know, t t talking to you, I, I'm pretty much getting to know you. You know, listening to your story and and, and our conversations. Was there any mm -hmm. point a time during your professional career you had like a low point? Yes. Oh yes. This when I was, uh, I'll never forget, this was the year 2000, 2000, uh, no, 1999, right? I was playing in, in Argentina in, in Boca, Boca Juniors. So we had to do a urinalysis, a urinalysis. So I did my urinalysis and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm getting ready to fly now to Australia because, you know, everyone talking about the year 2000, you know, everything is going to shut down and yeah, yeah, the plane's yeah. going to jump out the sky and all this stuff. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to fly to Australia to Sydney because, you know, Australia's a day and a half ahead of us. So yeah. if anything happened, I'm going to see it there first. So yeah. I flew down there and um, <clears throat> everything going well, you know, 2000 year, the year 2000 came, nothing happened. I'm like, man, it's, it's all a joke. Then I got a call from my agent. And he was like, so Leon, I mean, you know, you, you did a test in, in Argentina, right? I was like, yeah, I did a test. He's like, hmm. And then he asked me, have you ever done any drugs or anything? I'm like, no, I've never done drugs in my life. I never even smoked a cigarette. He's like, well, the test came back positive. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, it came back positive. But that's test A. So they have a test A, they have a test B. They always test it twice just to make sure. Yeah. So he was like, they're gonna test it again just to make sure the first test wasn't an error. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I wasn't tripping. I'm like, I know I haven't smoked anything or whatever. I'm like, it gotta be a mistake. Cool. So he called me again, like probably a day or two later. Yep, did a test B. It came back positive again. I'm like, wow, are you kidding me? So now I'm getting ready to fly back now to Buenos Aires. So I'm coming through the airport. You have cameras. You have people that are asking me questions, all wow. this stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm trying. I'm trying to get to to the hotel that I'm staying at. I'm trying to get there. You know, I'm trying to get there. They're like, so now have you have you done any drugs? What kind of drugs were you? I'm like, I haven't done the drugs. Now that wasn't so bad. But it got online, all right? And they had it where they had it, I remember exactly it said, Trimmingham caught for dope. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. This is right? crazy. You got to be kidding me, you know? But um, at that time, uh, my agent at that time was Jose Paris. You know what I'm saying? And when I tell you that Jose Paris was like a father figure to me, he was. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because just as much as it hurt me, it hurt him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, so we did like, man, how are we gonna, you know, how are we gonna figure this out? I mean, how are we gonna get this going? You know? So he was telling me that um that I'd be suspended. The FIBA was trying to suspend me for like I think it was three years or something. I'm like, I can't be suspended Damn. for that long. 
Yeah. And um, but eventually they came back because what I was taking was um it was a vitamin here in the states that's legal in the states because everyone takes it, but it had um ephedrine in it. And ephedrina was banned in Argentina. I didn't know that. So I was taking a multivitamin and they had a um a substance in it that was banned in Argentina. So that's why it came out positive. So it wasn't really my fault because I told him, well, it's legal in the States. I don't know why it's not legal in Buenos Aires. So when when FIBA heard all that stuff, they were like, okay, we're going to just suspend him for for three months. All right. So I'm like, okay, three months without playing. But I don't know how my agent worked it out, but I left Buenos Aires and was able to go straight to Spain <laughs> and play for Granada. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, well, I'm supposed to be banned, but now I'm still playing. So I, up to this day, I don't know how you work that out or whatever. But the lowest part for me was when that stuff was online. Mm. It was like, man, because it took forever to get that stuff off. You know, once stuff go online, you can't yeah. get it off easily. Right. I'm yeah, surprised man. you were able to get it off. Yeah. yeah. Wow, man. Oh, yeah. Like it's sometimes true. I sometimes I go online and I see stuff about me. I'm like, Really? I'm like, wait, <laughs> that's me. I lived there before. I'm like all type of stuff. And I'm like, I don't even know. So now I don't even trip about it anymore. I'm like, whatever. But with that, I definitely had to to get that out, man. Cause you know, it's like Trimmingham. That was like the only Trimmingham in the world playing basketball at that level. So yeah, anyone read that is like, okay, we know exactly who that is. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like my last name was Johnson or Jackson or Thomas. It was like, <laughs> you know, it's a unique name, so they know exactly who that is. And it just, you know, that was my lowest point. That was my lowest yeah. point, man. But, you know, that, God had my true. back. God definitely had my back on that situation. That's true because, like you said, your name, you know, you have a unique name. So, so somebody said, Trimmy, I'm the matter where they at in the wall. Once they came yeah. across you, it's, it's gonna stick to them. They're gonna read about it, and you know their reaction probably will be the same as everybody. They're gonna be shocked, like mm -hmm. exactly. You know, you know so. wow. But that was that was the the lowest point that that I had. I think in in all my all my years of playing, you know, um, I low. I never forget when I was in Saudi Arabia. When I went up there, we went to. I was playing for a city all the way up north, and there was nothing up there. I was like, there was no American restaurants. There was no American nothing. And for the first couple of weeks, I was bored to the point that I wanted to leave. And, um, but, the, but the owner for the team spoke perfect English and he was real cool, man. And I was like, look, I don't know if I can stay here, man. So he worked it out where, okay, well, on the weekends, because in Saudi Arabia, you play like on the weekends and sometimes on Wednesdays. So he was like, on the weekends, I'm gonna send you and the other American, I'm gonna send you guys down to Jeddah. Now Jeddah is like a place in Saudi Arabia that's very, very modern and they have American stuff down there. So it's very Americanized in Jeddah. So he was like, I'm gonna send you guys down to Jeddah. You know, I'm gonna pay for the hotel, everything, the food, everything. You guys can sit there for the weekend. I'm gonna fly you guys back for the week, practice, play. I was like, okay, cool. So before that, before he did all that, I would have said that Saudi Arabia would have been number two because there was nothing to do up there for two weeks. Nothing, you know, until until he worked it out. <clears throat> so, so yeah, man, it's a it's a lot. <laughs> it's it's a lot, lot, man. I'm sure there's some things that I'm missing out, but hey, but it's a hey. lot. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's some things you're missing out too, but you're you you're, you're gonna be able to re remember and say ah no. because from mm -hmm. from what we've heard, you've been all over, man, and your name your name ring across the nation. Yeah, um, all over. One thing I I did want to um early early in your career when you were first starting out, um, coming from a little island, what it was it ever hard like speaking your mind, saying what you want, saying what kind of deal is good, what kind of deal ain't good? Like how do how were you able to decipher all of that? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point, man, because it definitely was, you know. 
it was um because I had no clue about negotiation. Mm -hmm. I had I had no clue. So I don't know if teams ripped me off or shortchanged me. I don't know because I put my trust in my agents. Um and I trusted my first agent, David Atkins. I definitely trusted Jose Paris. So I trusted those guys to negotiate my contracts and all this stuff. Um but but yeah it, it was it was tough because you just you just don't know. You know, you just don't know. even I went to college, you know, they're not teaching me in college how to negotiate a contract. You know? So it was it was tough, man. It was it was tough because um I'm like, look, I gotta put all my trust in you. I gotta put all my trust in you. Until later on in my career that I understood how the process works and about contracts and all that stuff then I was able to have some more input into my um, my own personal affairs and stuff. But in the beginning, nah, it was completely out of my hands, you know. And I just had to hope that, you know, they had my best interests at heart. Did your agent used to just come and bring it, put it on the table, hey, this is what they're offering, and did they give you any input? Like after, like after you, they, you guys got used to each other? Yeah, after that's what I'm saying with, with both of my agents that um they didn't just put it down and be like, okay, we'll you know, sign this. You know, they actually would go through with go through it with me. Um like I remember my first contract in Sydney with Dave. I never forget Dave went through everything. And the thing with, with Dave was that he would travel to where I was at. You know, so it was like it's not just okay, I pick up a phone and he telling me he's actually there in person. To make sure I get settled in, to make sure my contract, everything is good, and so forth. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That I was so blessed that in the beginning I had agents who looked at me more so than just a client agent, but they looked at me as a father son relationship. Could have really, you know, cared about me and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they actually sit down and explain everything word for word. You know, they let me know. Okay, well. You know, you get this, you do this, you get this bonus. You know, you're in the top five here, you might get this bonus. Um, you know, the team get this percentage from your con. So he told me, they told me everything, you know. And again, but as I got older, I was able to have me be more hands on mm -hmm. with my contracts. And if I see um, a phrase or something that I don't like, then I'm like, okay, well, I'm not too sure about this one. I'm not too sure about that one. And then later on in my career, I started getting advancements before I even stepped foot in the country. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So now you got to show good faith in me. You know, you, you really want me there. Okay, well, give me an advancement. Bam. Mm -hmm. All right. One time when I was getting ready to go to Tokyo, I was down here in Houston. And they actually flew down here in Tokyo, uh, in Houston, to have me sign a contract. And give me my investment in person, and then flew back. So that came down for one day, just for that. You know, so talk about business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, you know, so in your opinion, which is better, long-term contracts or short-term contract? I mean, it, it depends. It definitely depends, and it depends on the country that you're in. You know, um, like if you go to a country that's reputable. And you know that okay, you gonna get your money on time. They gonna pay you on time. Um, then yeah, you you might want some security. See what I'm saying? But sure. if you go to a country like say, for instance, you go to Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Mexico has a reputation for not paying, not paying the um, the players, right? So you go to Mexico, you sign a long term contract. You might not get paid at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or you might get paid once. And then you spend the next three, four months trying to get paid, trying to get your money from those previous months. So it depends on which country you you actually go in. It depends on you doing your research and making sure that they're reputable and they're going to pay on time. And also how you feel. Do you want that security? You know what I'm saying? Everyone is different. Uh, like if you go to a country and you have, you have your wife and you have your two kids and whatever, yeah, that you, you might want more security than I am going there single. You see what I'm saying? 
So it all depends on your situation, you know? <clears throat> yeah, that's true, that's true. There, there was a question from one of the viewers. They asked if you ever met uh, Tim Duncan. I did, yeah, I met Tim, Tim once. Um, actually talked to him one time when he when I came back to to St. Croix. You know, I talked to him. He was at Wake Forest at the time. So then I met him again in Puerto Rico when we played um, the U.S. team. So yes, yeah, so I met him a few times. I, met I remember as a kid um, coming when he was in college, coming to Central Gym, and I mm -hmm. catch the I catch the tail end of of, of y'all um, playing in Open Gym, mm -hmm. and that was that was like a good sight to see because like again, you know Tim Duncan just starting out his making a name for himself in college you know the legendary right. weapon in the gym weasel all the zoros everybody in the gym and man that was like a, a kid in the candy store just watching all i play i think i catch the last game i play and mm -hmm. um, that was a that was a good day for me right there <laughs> that's what i'm saying man we used to have some run-ins back in the day you know what I'm saying? You used to have some runnings back in the day that would prepare you for anywhere you go in the world, man. It was like, look, I mean, I go up, I go to whether it's Sydney, whether it's Germany, whether it's Spain, you're trying to talk me out of my game. It ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. I had people I grew up with that, you know, talk trash to me back home. You know, so that just built me up. You know, that got, got me prepared for whatever I'm about to face. Because we used to have some runnings back there. You know what I'm saying? That's why I've never been one in my career to cry for fouls. I've never been one to cry for fouls. You know what I'm saying? I would always think, look, you got to play through the foul. Why? Because True. growing up, you ain't got no foul call. The only how you got a foul call is if you actually, they actually knock you down completely and you can't get up. Then they may give you that call. Yeah. But no. If you're going up and they hit your hand and they, they push you, what? I know foul, that's basketball. That's basketball. Keep on playing. This is true. true. Keep on playing. You know what I'm saying? So, I know, like, Weasel used to get mad, man. Cause, you know, Weasel had those hops, too. And he used to like to dunk. But when Weasel go to dunk, man, they'd be pushing him out of the air <laughs> and do all this stuff, man. Weasel used to be mad, boy. He used to be mad. But look, hey, that's how we did back in the VI, man. We, hey, ain't no fouls. So, so when I'm playing now in different levels, I ain't five for fouls. Pac, real quick. Real right. quick, Pac. Now I'm laughing because you think really think back to what we used to play. Like, you know, everybody, like, it's true, man. Like, you have to get knocked down. It was like, man, would tell you, like, clearly you get fall. I'm was like, man, this man ain't gonna fall. Let's go. Right, like, right. You call exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, you call me no call. Yeah. Man, that's funny. You can no call, man. You could yeah. call. You could forget about that. Yeah, but like you said, man, like that definitely prepare you, man, like to go yeah. in further in your career, whatever sport, man, is like that toughness, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, so that made that adversity you face then, man. That's some that's yeah. funny with something to take back of that. The only person we never used to foul when we played down in West, the only person we never used to foul was Lockhart. Because he used to come out there and play. You know, we, we never used to foul him. You know, we had everybody had that respect for Lockhart and stuff. Yeah. But Lockhart could have shoot. You know, he could have shoot. And he talked <laughs> trash when he shoot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we like, you, man, you Lockhart, want I'm taking it easy on you. Are uh, you even going to it because I uh, you want playing time when I got on the court? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be running. <laughs> For real, man. For real. You know? That's true. Part. He would, <laughs> quick question. He would so talk I, mad trash, man. Gosh. I used all to send, trash. <laughs> <laughs> I used now to he would let you know. You play, huh? you play on a Sunday. You play mm -hmm. out there on a Sunday. You better believe during the week. He going to let you. He going to let you hear about it. For the whole week. Oh, like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, yo, trimming her. Hey, you couldn't stop me, man. Hey, I was lighting you up. You couldn't stop Lock up, man. You know we can't. You know we can't foul you like that. We gonna let you shoot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And plus, like, you know, you had his glasses on. We don't want to foul him. And yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Lock up, he let you. We do your thing, lock up. But yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but everybody else, yeah, you better believe you're getting fouled out there, man. <laughs> yeah, you get in for real. 
So I, I had the, the, the pleasure to play with Weasel in Man League and, and our mm -hmm. team Top Guns. And we, Weasel had this ritual. So this is this is a hot question. And I, I'm glad you say you, you and Weasel used to work out together because I want to know if you could do this too. Mm -hmm. So Weasel, that same gym that you, you and Weasel used to work out in, in the weight room, Weasel used to tie a rope from the stairs over the gym. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's a tight, like, shoulder high. And jump over it. And jump over it. Could yeah. you do that? I ain't jumping over there. I ain't trying to kill myself. And and, uh -uh. and not even, Mumba, not even running off, you know. Mm -mm. He's Stand standing still. right next to the rope. Yeah. And he going he to just, like, trot in place, you know, for a, a good five, mm -hmm. ten minutes. And if you just blink, you catch it on the tail yeah. end going over the rope. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Before every game, Mumba. That's amazing. That is crazy. That's crazy, yeah. That's amazing, yeah. man. And Weasel is shot, you know. So the when I tell yeah. the rope, they're like, like right here, <laughs> like elbow, elbow length. Yeah. Maybe a little higher, a little over the elbow. And, and he, he, he going to make sure that he touching the rope before he jumping. Mm -hmm. Like he's right next to the rope, Mumba. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he, he going to just leap over. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, like, what in the that's, world? That's crazy, man. That's amazing. And you should try to try to get me to do. It. I'm like, Weasel, you crazy? Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm gonna let you do that, man. I'm good. I'm good where yeah. I'm at. I'm, I'm okay, you know, <laughs> because because I, I I guarantee you, man. I guarantee you that even when they measure my my vert in Toronto, and it, it was forty, I guarantee you, Weasel had a higher vertical than I did. No, yeah. he did. I promise you, he did. You know what I'm saying? And um, I wouldn't even, it won't even be far fetched to think that probably even Zoe had a higher vertical than I did. You know what I'm saying? Because um, those are the guys I try to emulate in terms of, of jumping. You know, yeah. I couldn't compete with Weasel. I can I mean, Weasel had the hops and he had those big old hands where he should just grab that ball like it was a grapefruit, you know, and he couldn't do anything about it. You really couldn't. Yeah. I, I don't and know. He was strong. I don't know if anybody used to recognize, but Weasel used to double dribble a lot, my son. Very sneaky, because he used to palm the ball when he was dribbling. <laughs> he very sneaky with that. Yes, yes. <laughs> but he used to get, he used to get away with it. So, hey. His hand is too big. <laughs> hand is too big, man. <laughs> Oh man, that's but funny, yeah, man. That's that's funny. Yeah, I never used to do that stuff that Weasel be doing, man. That's he was on a whole different level. Yeah, we now Weasel was. was a, I I could believe you when you say you used to work out with Weasel. That dude is a workaholic, my son. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. nobody fat, nothing like that on this man, you know. Mm -mm. No, man, just be running sprints. He got me into that running sprint stuff. I was like, man. I'm trying to go home, man. You out here playing ball all day, walking <laughs> up and down the hill, and now you want to run sprints before you go home? I'm like, come on, man, come on, weapon. Let's do it, man. Come on, weapon. Come on, whip. I'm like, ah. okay. Now, Weasel Let's still with a, a gallon of water in the hand. How <laughs> he always walking around with a gallon, a gallon bottle with water in that number everywhere. It's real. <laughs> he was serious, man. That man was serious I, about the health and everything. I'm telling you, that dude will rip. That dude was mm. in shape. He got the endurance to go all mm. day. Yeah. I tell you what, man. If if Weasel was about, let's say, maybe about three inches taller and he had the exposure, you know, I mean, I think he went to Barbara Scotia. Mm. Well, I think he went there. But um, if he had get more exposure, I mean, Weasel would have had a career overseas as well. A very successful yeah. one, man. He would have. You know what I'm saying? And that's a, that's another thing that we need to, why we need the exposure, because a lot of our young players, when they go, come to America and they get mm. that culture shock, because I know when I first came, I didn't want to even stay the first semester of college. I was ready to go back home myself. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Somehow I managed to stick with it then. But a lot of our players, they can't, they, 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 they get to, America, especially when it get cold, or oh, it's time to mm -hmm. go home. Yeah, yeah, for real. That's true. That's you know, true. and that's the thing, man, is that we got somehow we got to prepare them for for what's out there. You know, it's and that's easier said than done. Well, yeah, it's like how do you prepare them for a culture shock? 
you know. True. I mean, it's it's like because it's not that they can't compete with the other players at the schools or whatever. They can compete with them. It's just that, man, they get homesick. <laughs> you know what I'm sure, saying? Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm not around my people. You know, it's, you know, I don't want to be here any longer. So that's, yeah. yeah. That's the problem right there. To, to follow up on the all your question, uh, Pan just asked you previously, how, how was your preparation during your, your season? Did you, um, was it a certain type of music you listened to, a certain artist? Was it a certain movie? Was it, did you eat the same meal? You know, like, how was your mm. preparation? My meal was always spaghetti and meat sauce. That was, that was my meal before, before a game. And I would always eat that like about three, four hours before the game. You know, I could, I couldn't understand how people can eat right before the game in the locker room. I couldn't do that, man. I was like, nah, uh -uh. I had to eat like about three to four hours before the game. And it was always like spaghetti and meat sauce, something like, you know, um, in terms of music, listen to anything, you know, I, I would listen to something upbeat so I can get hype, you know, whatever it is, whatever is out, whatever, I listen to it. And, um, and yeah, then I get ready to go. You know, I, I go to the locker room, I'll change. I'll, before I go out, I would always say a prayer and then I'm ready to roll after that. You know, but um, but I always kept the same routine no matter where I went. You know, I always kept it. Yeah. And if I had, if we had a game day where, say, for instance, we had a hotel and they didn't have any spaghetti and meat sauce, that would throw me off for the game. You know, mm -hmm. that it would completely throw me off. So it was a ritual where I had to have certain things in place when I was playing. You know, yeah, that's true. That's true. But yeah, <clears throat> had to you had to have that man. Had to have that. You know, so, but yeah, man, it was um, <clears throat> it was a journey, man. It was a journey. Before, so, Uma, before you get to your quick hitters, um, is there like like anything that you um, maybe coming into the show that you wanted to touch as we come winding up to to three hours uh, talking and. Anything that you wanted to touch on that you didn't get a chance to, to speak on? Um, I think I spoke on uh, most of the stuff that, um, you know, that stood out during my, during my career. Um, I just wanna, just wanna just thank people out there, man, that helped me along the way. You know, I had a lot of people I mean, I just named a whole bunch of people that helped me along the way. Um, you can never do it by yourself. I don't care what right. people say, okay, well, you know, I got here by myself. No, nah, you didn't get there by yourself. There's always someone, whether in the background, whether it's a, a wife, a girlfriend, a family member, a, a coach, a, another player, a friend, whatever. But there's always someone who took you by the hand and guide you. You know what I'm saying? And they guide you to a certain distance, then they let you go, then someone else took you and guide you the rest of the way. You know, it's always someone there who who help you to get to whatever level you got to, you know, and um, to a lot of those people, man, you know, it's nothing but love to them. I mean, most of them are on my Facebook page. So, you know, I, I see them some once in a while, we, we get in contact. So, you know, it's just, <clears throat> you just can't do it by yourself. You know, and we have to, you know, and when I say we, I mean, myself included, because I've definitely been slacking in terms of, you know, helping the youths in the Virgin Islands. Um, we need to put, I mean, take it seriously, put a more, more effort into helping these youths in, in, the, in the Virgin Islands. Man. I mean, you know, we don't, they don't have the, the leagues in terms of numbers that we did growing up, where they, maybe the courts are not there anymore. May, I don't know what happened, but, um, they don't have the same opportunities in terms of playing and developing like like we did. And we need to, you know, definitely need to take them, take that more seriously, you know. And everyone, even if, even though I'm here in Houston, there's still stuff I can do. There's still contacts that I have in Houston and different places in the states, man, internationally. Um, we definitely need to help them out because we have an abundance of talent down there. 
and they're looking to us for guidance and leadership. You know, they're looking to us to see, okay, well, when you guys were growing up, you had the older folks to help you out. You know, you had them to guide you. You had them to help you out. Now, what about us? We need that same thing too. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think that's something that we need to, we definitely need to um, focus on going forward. Um, quick, quick, one one last question. Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead. You good? When you were talking about um, thanking people, um, one thing that always stood out to me, and I'm gonna name some players before I, before I talk about it. Mm -hmm. There is Dwayne Wade, Tim Duncan, mm -hmm. Scotty Pippen, even up to the Russell Westbrook. I they, these are the the four people that stand out to me. I have never seen anybody else know you, somehow somewhere in your game. You don't always find that backboard. Like, who do you credit that backboard shot from? Because that, I think that's a skill within its own. Because not everybody could do that. Like, who 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 can you credit to to or how did you develop that backboard shot? Like, so good. Um. Well, that started way back in Central. You know, that's something that the coaches back there used to always stress. Um, <clears throat> Cornelius Locker, Jarvis used to always stress the backboard. Then when I got to Sioux City. Uh, my coach, he would always stress that as well. Use it. You have the angle, use the backboard. You have the angle, use the backboard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, and I learned to, like when I post up, I learned to get the perfect and I knew exactly where I was going to post up. Mm -hmm. You know, and I knew once I post up and I turn left or I turn right, I'm going to have the perfect angle for the backboard. You know what I'm saying? And and that way, you don't have to worry about the depth perception mm -hmm. Behind you, because some some court you're playing, they have crowd in the back. Some court you don't have any crowd in the back. You know, and it can affect you if you're trying to go straight net. But once you go for that backboard, you know you're aiming for one spot and one spot only, the top of the square. And once sure. you hit that, boom, nine turns out of ten, you're gonna hit it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why you should always aim for. And the fact that I had the hops that when I jump, no one is gonna bother me, so right. I can jump and take my time and aim for that spot, you know, and shoot it. So, <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was my coaches definitely that stressed that using the backboard. And even now when I when I would coach and stuff, I tell the guys, use the backboard, use the backboard. Like, okay, coach, we can use the backboard. Next time down, net, net. Perfect angle, but they want to go net. Mm -hmm. I'm like, use the backboard, use the backboard. My guys would tell you um, – the guys who were listening, who who played for me, they would tell you, I'll be like, stress, use the backboard, use the glass. We used to have a drill where we actually shoot off the glass. You know, warm up, you're shooting off the glass, boom, boom, boom. You know, and I think that's um that's very important. You know, yeah, a true. lot of kids these days don't want to use it. Before before we close, Zora sent a message in the in the in the chat. And I, before we close that, I'll definitely read it, who read did? it to you. Zoro. Zora, and I'll okay. read it to you before we definitely close up. Um, you know, I wanted to, you know, you talk about your mom, you talk about your dad, and you mentioned your sister. I wanted to um, first touch on, I'll say for your parents last, how was your relationship with your sister, you know, um, growing up? Just because you mentioned how she made you your first, you know, jersey. So can I, you know, touch, you know, talk about your sister a little bit, you know, how your relationship mm -hmm. with her, how, what kind of impact she have had in your in your career and your life and you know etc well <clears throat> you know she, well, i hope she's listening because she told me she's gonna listen to it so she's supposed to be listening i hope she's but, listening um, too <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because i grew up with two older sisters. i didn't have no brother right okay so my middle sister which we used to call her ag but her real name is adriana white so you know she was she was like my brother you know what I'm saying? We everything I did that you do with your brother, I did with her. We go riding bike together. We go, we play basketball. My dad built a, a rim behind us. We play basketball, you know. Um, as I told you guys earlier, she's the one that made my first uniform, which was a white t-shirt, and had my number in the back and had my previous nickname, which was Belle. Then before it became weapon, she had that in the back. So, you know, um, and one day she even saved my life because we went down to the beach and I got out thinking I could swim. 
And next thing I know, I went downhill. And it's a good thing that she was watching because she came and she grabbed me and pulled me out. You know, I don't even think she could have swim, but she was able to walk and pull me out. So, you know, so that's my sister, man. That's the reason why I came here to Houston because, um, you know, to visit with her when she got married and stuff like that. Um, my oldest sister passed away a few years ago. So I know she's resting in peace right now and yeah, she's looking right. down. But, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, with my family, we're not, we not a big, my immediate family, we're not huge. It was just five of us. But, you know, we're really tight. You know, when we get together, we, we, we tend to have a lot of fun together. And um, they're here in Houston, too. So oh, that makes it easier. Makes it easier for us. And your 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 parents were your parents originally from you know the Virgin Islands St. Croix or they're from a, a different country? No, my parents were originally from St. Vincent. Oh see, okay. So yeah, they're from St. Vincent and my two sisters were actually born in St. Vincent as well. And then, mm. you know, my dad and stuff migrated here to to the Virgin Islands. And then that's when they had me when I um when they came to the Virgin Islands. So my parents are um from St. Vincent originally. Now that you know they're naturalized, they're Americans now, yeah. including my sisters. But um, in the beginning, they're they're from St. Vincent. So, so yeah. Did you did 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 your sisters, did your sisters or your parents ever came to watch you play professionally overseas? Uh, did they, did nah. they ever get a chance to? Uh, the only one that came was my dad. Okay. You know, my sisters um, they didn't come. My my mom didn't come. I guess. They didn't want to fly that far because i mean i was far especially yeah, yeah, when yeah. i was in That's sydney was, yeah you know in sydney 15 hours you know so my dad actually came up there and one thing one thing that's why i would always have a love for sydney more so than just basketball was the way how how did the management treated my dad when he got there you know they put my dad up in like the presidential suite you know, they put him up there and he had a piano. My dad loved to play music. So he was up there playing his music. He was in complete heaven at the time, you know, and um, he came down and I had two cars in Sydney. They gave me two cars in Sydney, you know, and I was trying to get my dad to drive one. But he was like, I, I can't drive out here. You know, the stand wheel is on the opposite end, and they drive on this side of the street. I'm used to this side of the street, and he was. He said, "No, nah, I'm not going to drive." But they, they took they took great care of my dad when when he came to Sydney, in um yeah. in Sydney. And not only did my dad come, but Derek Hodge came to watch me play. And he was a, at the time he was a lieutenant governor for the Virgin Islands. Oh wow! And he came to see me play. I was playing in Canberra. We were playing. We were on the road playing in Canberra. And he came to see me play. And after the game, they told me that, you know, your governor is here to see you. I'm like, my governor? <laughs> my governor is here to see me. He's like, yeah, he, he, want, he want to see you. I'm like, are you serious? What's his name? He said, um, Derek Hodge. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I went outside wow. and I met, I met Derek Hodge and we, we talked for a little bit, you know? I was like, man, <clears throat> I'm talking to the governor. You know, if I knew now, what I, if I knew back then what I knew now, I could make a little bit of demands and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, true. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, I was just like, "Wow, there's the governor. He came to, he came to see me." So that yeah. was that was really cool. Yeah, he just came out. Someone asked if your dad worked in Hess Refinery. Yes, yeah. he did. He did. Okay. He sure did, and Will, I loved Will, it too. Wilfred was who yeah. asked that. Oh, Wilfred. Yeah, okay. I loved it too. I remember. I don't know if you remember back in the days in Hess, they used to have those Christmas parties. Where mm -hmm. everything was free, mm -hmm. man. <laughs> man, you should love going to those Christmas parties. Every At every Hess. Christmas, did your dad bring home the, the has a different has truck, like has the little yeah, the car? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Used to have those, and you know, you, when you when you use it and stuff, the lights will come on and everything. It was mm -hmm. like, man, I, said, I love hats. <laughs> you know, is is your mom still with us? Yeah, my mom, she's actually down here in Houston. Well, you know, thank, she's here. thank you, and mom, to, for giving me my, my first job ever at, at KFC. At KFC? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's lovely. Know, that's yeah, that's dope. That's lovely. She was she was so cool, man. Yeah, uh, but cool. I I I quit the job on her. Um, <laughs> to, to go to a Fuji's concert. She she tell me she tell oh, me. Oh wow! Yeah, she tell me Stephen. I ain't I ain't a Fuji's. fool. She said, I know, I know you, I will call him out to walk Mumba. And she said, I'm a fool. I know you want to go to see the, the concert down at the um at the at the track. Uh, but she said, if you don't come today, don't come back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. She was yeah, she direct. Wow. Yeah, she was very direct. <laughs> that's, that's direct. <laughs> because that's, that's that, you know, that's that's the first job I had was in KFC, you know, because she used to run all the KFCs in the Virgin Islands, even though it's in St. Thomas. So you know, so she gave me a part-time job there in KFC, and I'm thinking, okay, you know, my mom is a boss. I'm I'm okay, you know. So I used to give my friends and stuff free chicken. Woo, man! When she found out, <laughs> oh man, probably that was the end of it, man. After that, <laughs> after that, man, I shaped up, and I became one of the best workers down there, man. I was like, cause she like, look, what you doing? Reflect on me, right? You know what I'm saying. And That's like, true. Yeah, Very you know, you're yeah. right. Because I used to get them on. Man, when I used to work in, in Fredericksted, they used to come in the back. Man, I used to get them chicken. Get them all type of chicken, wow. you know. And, so, um, but, you know, but they have an account for each chicken pieces. So they know, okay, yeah. well, some chicken pieces are missing. Where they at? You know, so it was, yeah, it was wild though, man. But, <laughs> yeah, but she, <laughs> she didn't play. But she was nice though. She was definitely mm -hmm. a, a good person to work for, um, you know. But yeah, she definitely would would be direct with you, and but she she would she would treat you right, you know. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And I, I really do appreciate her for because uh, for giving me that job because you know I, I could just remember the first, the feeling when I get my first check. It wasn't much, but <laughs> I was going from being broke to now I getting a check. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, having so, some money, yeah, yeah, for yeah. real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having some money, man. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely tell her, man. If she's not, yeah, if she's not watching, yeah, I'm gonna definitely, definitely tell her. Yeah. Definitely shout out to her, man. Um, What's your true, true or false? Um, there was a. I heard you when you move her up to um, Houston. You bought you bought her a, a KFC franchise in Houston. True or false? <laughs> no, that's that's false. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's false. Mm -mm. I moved her up here, but um, I bought her a house when, when she came up here. Gotcha. Yeah. So I bought, yeah, I bought a house and I bought a car. And it was funny because she was working, she was working at this, she used to actually run this, this daycare when she came up here. And um, she had a car, my sister, old car, she gave to my mom. So it was like, it was one day I bought her a new car. It wasn't, it wasn't brand new, but it was a lot newer than the one she had. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a key for, for the car that she was driving. So I went took the car and I moved it further down and I parked the new car on the side and I stayed in my car and I was watching and I was videotaping her. Wow. So I was watching her when she when she got off work and she came out and she was like, where's my car at? You know, I could read her lips. She was like, where did my car go? Where did my car go? And I had her there sweating for about five minutes. <laughs> and then, you know, I came out and I was like, mom, where your car at? She's like, I don't know who stole my car. And I gave her the keys. And I was like, here's your car. Right? She's like, what? I said, this is your new car right here. I bought you a new car. So so she was pretty happy about that, man. But um but yeah, but she she's a my mom's a good woman, man. She's um from head to toe, she is. Anyone that meet her, they can always say the same thing. You know, so I'm definitely blessed with that. That's what's up. That's what it's all about. That's why you work hard and and yeah. You know, and, and 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 work on your skills till one day where you could be able to buy your mother a home, buy her a car, and so that's what's up. That's that's very honorable of you to yeah, pay it back. That's beautiful. Exactly. Man. You know, most definitely. Be before so, I get to what, what Zoro mentioned, I, I want to ask you this question. This last yeah, last question nice. here. What's your greatest or most proud mo moment playing professional basketball and outside of basketball up to this point of time in your life? Uh, well, my proud moment outside of basketball used to be when I was married. I'm no longer married. I got divorced about, man, about 14, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
in terms of playing basketball, that's easy. I mean, playing for your playing for your home. You know, once I put on that the Virgin Islands uniform, you are presenting the place where you were born. You know, mm-hmm. and sure. um, to me, that was the proudest moment. That's that's been my proudest moment, even despite all the places that I've been. You know, um, so so yeah, so that's wearing that uniform, man. It's you know, for I mean, I don't understand yeah. people don't get a chance to experience that, especially if you're born in the states, you never get a chance to play for the United States. But that's true. I and mean, once you be able to play for the city, the country, or the island that you're from, you were born. That's that's a moment that you know surpasses anything. Uh, Cas Cas George said, "Um, hello." Long been long, been a long time. Okay, what's up, Jess? So, uh, Zoro, Zoro um, wrote um, earlier. Um, Weapon couldn't come outside and play on the court with us, even though he was living right in front of the court on the bottom <laughs> floor. But he used to watch us from his window and taking taking everything while we play whole court, top up tree on tree twenty one. The whole mm-hmm. uh, the only how the only how he came out is to empty the garbage and it wasn't full from time <laughs> from time he started from t- from time he started playing we know he was special and plus he was from Raleigh and that's a, and that's facts and I and I got the name the secret weapon growing up in Raleigh you yep. had to learn the game we had to hold whole lot of good players we had a whole lot of good players. So weapon, I from, I from I one is very, I no, oh, I from, I from one is very proud of you, and you got to mm-hmm. got to know you and you and you and played with and against against you. Love, love alone, brother. I love, I love your story. Z, appreciate you, Z, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know I apologize saying? for the way how I read that because I was struggling towards the end. Of it. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. You know, it's you know for for people who are watching from you know from different places, man. Whether it's in Australia, Venezuela, whether it's in Spain, wherever you know that you tune in. Um, I'm gonna keep this short, man. But let me tell you guys something about this man right here, man. Keith Zoe Swanson, man. This was when I tell you this was the Jordan before Jordan. This was, he had moves that up to this day, you still haven't seen, you know what I'm saying? There was nothing, I mean, Zoe absolutely had no weakness. He had no weakness whatsoever. People would come from all over to watch him. I was fortunate I had that close of a view to watch to watch him, man. Cause he, you know, he would play right there on the court and I'd be like, okay, I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching. And I'm also observing and just soaking everything in. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget when he went to to Oak Hill and he I came back and he was going and they were gonna have the, you know, a game that night in Raleigh. Man, when I tell you people showed up, you know what I'm saying? It was like, man, Zoe is back, Zoe is back, you know, he's back. And if I remember correctly, man, he had came back, and maybe he can he can clarify this too. But he had came back and he had, I think it was a, a yellow converse. Mm-hmm. You know, for some reason that just stuck in my mind because I think Oak Hill Academy uniform was yellow, if I remember correctly. But he had like a yellow converse. He came back and I was like, is it yellow con I think it was a yellow converse, yeah. And the stuff he was doing that night, man, he was doing some stuff that night. We were like, no, man, this is this is not real. This is not real. You know what I'm saying? He, I mean, he used to give Lockhart, he used to make Lockhart sweat. You have a high school playing against a junior high school team, and he used to be like, you know, good competition because of who? Because of Zolo. So, um, you know what I'm saying? They couldn't stop him. They, they could not stop him. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's why I learned so much from watching him play. You know, I learned so much from watching McMillan play. I, I learned so much from watching Bush play. You know, all these guys were right there in my area, you know, Cobra, Weasel, Sonny, you know, it was like, they're right there, man. I used to watch these guys play day in and day out. 
it's like, man, soak everything up. You're just soaking everything up. Because when I tell you, this guy had some talent. You know what I'm saying? I wish back in the days we had social media so, it, so the whole world could see know, what man. I'm talking about. Know. You know what I'm saying? Because I wish I he was doing been. things before before his time. It was literally, it was before his time. You know what I'm saying? You seen stuff now in the league. You're like, man, look at that move. But he was doing stuff before his time. He was doing all that stuff before these guys are doing it. You know? And that's why he's just... His name is just legendary. You know, when I went to to Venezuela, my first year in Venezuela, it was um, the guy on my team <clears throat> named Sean Green. And, you know, one day me and Sean was talking, man, and he was talking about it. I guess he and Zorro played together in Oak Hill. And he, I mean, Sean spent about 30, 40 minutes talking about Z. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And I'm like, I said, yeah, I know, I know who you're talking about. I know exactly who you're talking about. You know, he was just – now, keep in mind, Sean played in the league. <laughs> he eventually went to Indiana. I think he went to the Sixers as well, you know. But yet, he talking about Z, you know, and his eyes just lit up. So, yeah, man, it's – I was blessed to be able to to see him play in person and just to take parts of his game and, you know, and just learn, man. Let's get the wisdom and learn about the game and the love and the motivation and, and everything that he put into it, you know, to to become a legend, you know. So, so yeah, man. So, Z, man, I appreciate those words that yeah. you said, man. Definitely. Much love, yeah, man. man. Much love indeed, man. Much love. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. Yeah. That's amazing, man. I, 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 that's, I just that's have amazing. a vision in my head of what we're about to say with Zora, like just trying to envision this because – I catch Zora at the end, like, you know, he was still good. Don't get me wrong. Like, when I said the end, Zora was still top of the top when I when I catch mm. Zora. But when I said the end, like it, it he was on the down the downside of his career, you know? And mm. I used to see him do some amazing stuff, man. And <laughs> like you said, he was doing stuff before his time. Like yeah. he he was he's definitely an inspiration to a lot of us, man. Because yeah, his his legend. And then when you actually saw him play, it just he just lived up to what everybody said said about him every time. Yep. Because yeah, he had he had this move that I tried to emulate, and up to this day I couldn't do it. It was like he'd be coming down on a break, and he'd put the ball behind his back, but not all the way around. He'd go halfway, and he'd bring it back around with the same hand, and he put it out in front of you, and then bring it back in. Then he laid up. You couldn't. You couldn't guard that. You couldn't. That, you just be and, swinging, swinging out of the air. You couldn't guard that. that I remember that, that move be, like it was yesterday. That must be a rally move. I I, <laughs> I said this. I said this in my interview, Mumba. About uh, um, you, um, Max. One of Max's little brother was in my class in in Arta, and he named Miguel Lopez. And this man used to. This is the one that I said he used to only come school for lunch league. Um, Mumbai, you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Miguel used to. He was a lefty toe. Miguel used to put the ball behind his back and hide it. Mm -hmm. And ain't nothing you could do about it, Momba. Once he do it, he just put it, come back with the same hand, fake the left, and man, so smooth. <laughs> yeah. I said that must be a rally thing because that's the only I never saw Zora do it. Miguel is the only mm. person I ever see do that, Demerson. <laughs> and that's... you can't do nothing about it. So that gotta be a rally thing. Yeah. <laughs> and just, just, I mean, just think about the air time you gotta have to do all that stuff, man. You gotta be in the air for a few seconds to be doing all that. Yeah. Bringing the ball behind you, bringing it in front, and bringing it back, and then gonna. Man, I do that stuff. I'll be on the ground by the time I go to lay it up. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that's what I'm saying, man. The talent we had back then, the talent we have now, the talent we're gonna have in the future. Hey, it's there, man. Yeah, it's it there, man. You just keep you just keep recycling. You know, it ain't going nowhere. You know, man. Definitely big up to Zoro, man. I'm glad I had the chance to play with him for two seasons, man. You know, as a teammate. Yeah. You know, so. You know, definitely blessed, man. Man, that's amazing, man. 
you know man mm -hmm. weapon man man i we, we appreciate you coming out man it's something i want i wanted to say like you know that really stood out to me and you know sometimes mm -hmm. we take it for granted because we just go through life and stuff like that but why are you talking and stuff like that? Like i'm meditating thinking like you know people don't realize the impact sometimes your teammates and your friends at young ages you know you don't realize the impact each you have on each other's lives man you mm -hmm. know like how you you, you 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 talk about your story and you talk about this the, the certain individuals that help you that you took and it catapult your career man and you was able to to to, to play professionally you know for a long time man you know it, it, it's amazing man like when you really like meditate and look back on your life and think back at your childhood growing up and the people who really had a major impact and all it was just being was friends or competitive or good teammates you know and that was it and those little things was a major part of your life man that's amazing yeah man. like truly yeah you know yeah man you, you sure do man that's a hey, well said mumba man i mean that's you know you just, you just don't know man just when, when you see stuff in front of you like you trying to get somewhere, you know. I always tell the kids that I talk to, man. Whatever you want to be in life, uh, whether you want to be a, if you want to be a teacher, go and talk to a teacher. You know, pick the brain. All right. You want to be an athlete, go and talk to that athlete. Pick the brain. Watch what they're doing. Try to emulate them. All right. Because around us, um, <clears throat> you, you got, you know, it's like you have people here that are very influential in your life and they don't know that they're influential in your life. Yeah, that's you know true, saying? man. And, and you might never, you, you might go through life, man, like, Pang, you might go through life, man, but you might go through life where you might never know the person that you influenced. Mm -hmm. You might that's never true. get a chance to meet them. You know what I'm saying? But it's how you carry yourself every single day. Again, it comes back to character. How you carry yourself yeah. every single day because you got people watching. You got people watching, man. They're watching you. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> growing up in, in Raleigh, man, I was watching a lot of these guys, but these guys probably didn't know I was watching them. You know, I mean, they're not going to be playing ball and trying to look at, you know, okay, there's, there's the window. Okay, that's Leon right there watching through the window. <laughs> they're not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're going through, they're going through the whole, you know, playing the game or whatever. And I'm there watching them, just taking stuff in, taking stuff in, taking stuff in. You just never know who watching, man. You just just never know. It's true. You know what I'm saying? That's why you want to carry yourself with good character and stuff, because you know, and especially in the Virgin Islands, being a small place like that, and you have a name, oh yeah, you better believe they're gonna be watching you. It's true, very true. Very true. Believe it. So yeah, so, man. Yeah, man. Shout out and shout out to all, all the viewers, man, that tuned in, man, all the new viewers, first time watching. You know, we don't really, if we don't know your stuff, we appreciate you guys tuning in. You know, man, asking mm -hmm. all the questions, you know, Yousef, you know, Wilfred, Zoro, you know, everybody that tuned in, ask questions, Chani, you know, Rasan, Karim. You know, I appreciate you guys asking some, um, you know, amazing questions, man. And appreciate you guys supporting our uh, weapon and his, um, you know, telling his story. We celebrating and you know, giving him his flowers, man. Much love to you guys, man. I appreciate you guys definitely supporting me. You know, definitely mm -hmm. want to put that out there. You know, um, I'll let, I'll let Pang, Pang end it. But, man, you know, Weapon Man, it, it was a pleasure meeting you, man. You know, I always heard about you and, you know, finally get to meet you. You know, so, man, I appreciate you taking the time out, man. You know, I know T, I really want you to be here for this. You know, so hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, in the future, we could get you back on. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, you know, man, you can yeah, chop it up with Tegan. You know, maybe we could bring Zoro yeah. on since he's been a, such a big inspiration. You know, also other players have been a big inspiration to you as well, not to leave them out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe we could have both of you guys on or something. You know, you got a chance to really chop it up with Tegan as well, too. You know, because he definitely would have. He always talked about, man, I can't wait till Weapon come on. I can't wait till Weapon come on. Unfortunately, he doing yeah. something great with yeah. the youth and he couldn't make it. So hopefully in the future, we definitely could make that happen. You know, so most definitely, man. Yeah, we can definitely do that for sure. Yeah, Andrew, big up Fleming, big up, big up Andrew. Yeah, Andrew Fleming. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you know, go ahead, boy, man, boy. He's a fellow, man. When I tell you, he used to fly. You know, used to literally fly through the lane, man. Just fly. You know, all that hops and everything, just flying through the lane. We're a buckle five, but that's my boy right there, though. Yeah. 
<laughs> Bonehead. <laughs> That's that was an, another special player too. Bonehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you you think, man, it's like, I mean, you look up Bonehead and you like, man, you know what? Just hit him once and he gonna go down. But you get back up. You knock him down, he get back up, man. And he coming yeah. in straight at you. He had right. no fear. He had no. Man, he coming straight at you. He looking to dunk every single thing. Every time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He looking to dunk every single thing, man. <laughs> Boom here. My man right there. What's up, Boom? Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, look. <laughs> so we coming yeah, down man. to the we coming down to the end. Mumba, what's up with your, your quick hitters? No, no, no. That, that was my that was my quick hit. Well, I'll I'll, I'll hit you one quick hitter. Um Hmm. weapon you know because my, my quick hitters was more when i was asking about you you know like your sister your, your mom dad and stuff yeah, your yeah. i definitely wanted to put that out there you know just because okay. um you know when you when you're playing overseas and stuff and you spend a lot of time for your family and stuff like that you know so it's always good that we um you know have the the, the, the guests come on and really talk about their mom their parents you know siblings and stuff like that show them some love and stuff because sometimes they, they play in the back seat and sometimes they be the biggest inspiration you know they make a lot of right. sacrifices financially emotionally mentally you know so definitely i always want to show love to to the individual athlete even though you get all the praise and the popularity and everything we always got to show love to the family in the in, right. the in the back you know but um what's five words that describe you as a i got two questions what's five words that describe you as a person <sighs> five words uh dedicated um focused loyal funny and um hard working nice you know yeah if you had an actor to play you in a movie which actor would you choose oh man who would i choose um <clears throat> man who would i choose man which actor can play ball that's a, that's a question which one can play ball man Denzel? He got game, Denzel. <laughs> um, who would I pick? Who would I pick? Um, I mean, I, I guess I would, you know, I guess I would take Will Smith. You know, he's pretty talented. He can do all type of different things. Yeah. So, yeah, that's probably who I'll take. Oh, you know who? You know who? <laughs> Leon from above. Leon who playing above the rim. Yeah. Yeah, same name. You right. Same. You right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, keep, it, yeah. keep the same, keep the same name, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true, oh, man. I'll, hey, that's a good one right there, though. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, man. Well, weapon. Yeah. It was, it was. I'm sorry, I was late today. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm glad I was able to to get a chance to, to sit on and and hear your story. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to sit on and chat with us and and. You know, answer all the, the lowry questions and wonders people may have because your your name is one of the names that are gonna always come up when you're talking about Virgin Island basketball. Um, mm -hmm. even without people knowing you, meeting you, seeing you play, you're definitely an inspiration to the Virgin Islands. Um, I gonna speak for myself and and everybody that we are proud of you and, and the the lens uh, and the the your reach that you had out there in the world and leaving your mark and making the Virgin Islands proud and, and all the praises to you and more blessings to come your way and, and appreciate for coming on tonight. Appreciate you guys, man. Thanks for having me on, man. I, I definitely enjoy it. So it was a lot of fun and um, yeah, yeah, hopefully we can do it again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, we, we definitely gonna chat. We definitely gonna talk. We gonna chat. We, we put something special, uh, something special together for you, man. With some of the, the, right. the names that you mentioned that really had an impact. So we definitely go me Pang and Tia will definitely work on that. I recap right, big up cool. for Carry on big up. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. All right. Good night, man. All good right, night, fellas. everybody. Blessings. Blessings, Pang. Good night to everybody. All right. Have a good one, man. You too.